Hello, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Pick Aside Podcast. My name is Joel Moran, and I'm here with River Brown, Andrew Velez, Joe Dells, and John Tortorelli. This is now episode 352. In this episode, we are going to recap Super Bowl 58, debate if this is just the beginning of the Chiefs dynasty, if Shanahan will ever win the big game with the 49ers, and much more. This is now episode 352. One day after the Super Bowl, Drew is virtual. He was feeling sick. He got a hundred degree fever, but he said, I, I can't, I can't miss this episode. It's the day I after. The Super Bowl, so he's coming on the show. He's going to be on for the first segment. But of course, if he wants to stay on longer, he can. Drew, how you feeling? I've definitely felt better. Uh, you guys said it. I sound pretty terrible. I'll also say this. Your guys' audio is a little bit shaky. Just what I'm picking up on my end. Uh, but I'm reading the comments. I, I love that we started off where I wasn't on the screen because I'm look. I'm watching a lot of people look dumb at them saying I would duck because, like we know, I would never duck smoke. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs, absolutely. But I'm excited to 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 talk a little shop with you guys. Our audio should be fine now. It's just that whenever we play the intro music and we're talking at the same time. It is gonna sound it's gonna it's gonna sound okay. pretty bad because this is an OBS right, stream yard. But if you guys are in the chat right now, our audio should be fine. Give us a thumbs up if our audio is fine. Sounds good. Yep. I mean, man, how are you guys feeling, man? Because I'm feeling pretty great. It's a great day. I was watching the Super Bowl with with Dells and with Riv. You know, Riv wasn't the happiest, even though I think Brock pretty played, you know, a solid game. It wasn't too bad. He Upset? played he, it, it, you definitely wasn't happy. There was two people cheering for the Chiefs in the whole apartment. <laughs> Mr. Dell was rooting for the Chiefs. I'm not surprised. On. Didn't just what a for me. He's <laughs> a bitch. He sucks. You know what? The, the first topic of the show where we are going to recap the Super Bowl. But I just want to say, man, you know, because I know how this panel would have been had the roles been reversed. I wish had the Chiefs lost to the Niners. I feel like I would have came up on here and got an ambushed. It would have been Brock Purdy after Brock Purdy after Brock Purdy. But I feel like you guys got to be held to the same standard because all year long I had Drew saying the Chiefs was fraudulent. Hmm. This is the year. They're frauds. You have a tweet. You were so you were so hell bent on that being fact. Mr. Riv picking the Dolphins, Bills, Ravens and Niners against them. Oh, and four when he's picked against the Chiefs in the playoffs. Mr. Dells, I remember after they beat the Dolphins, he said the win was kind of a little bit overrated, kind of fluky. He picked the Bills, and the Chiefs beat the Bills. I mean, I I'm just saying here today, as someone that just wants to hear an apology for the Chiefs. Didn't you have oh. the Chiefs losing in your bracket? Sure, I had the oh, I, I had the Cowboys. Second. I had the Cowboys making the Cowboys. A Super Bowl too. Yeah, yeah. So, so my bracket after uh, my bracket after a couple games it was game. over. Mm. Yo, but Joel, every you game, caught him. every game nice. when we, every game when we pick the our playoff picks, I pick the cheese. Bro, I, he's got, I he's got both sides covered. He's if they if they if they lose, it was in his bracket. If they win, I was with the Chiefs all along. Little fish, don't you know well, that's, that's who he is? That's who he is. He's missing cover all corners. I respect him for. I respect it. the shit out of it. Don't Listen, wrong. there's nothing there's nothing worse than calling the Chiefs fraudulent after they beat the Dolphins. You said it was an overrated win. That's what you I said. I did say they were getting overrated. That's what you said. I remember when, when Mookie was on the show for the first time, when he came up here, and I had to leave because I had to go bowling with Jess, Jess as a family. Did you have fun that day? Huh? Did you have fun that day? I did have fun that day, even good. though we went to a pretty bad arcade, oh, but good. it was pretty fun. I'm not, good, I'm not good at bowling. I'm not oh, a good bowler. Okay. Yeah, I was terrible. Put the, sides up? the hmm? bumpers? You put the bumpers up? No. Oh, okay, respect. No, no, no. respect. I'm, I'm a terrible bowler. You got to go out like a man. I'm a terrible bowler. But I remember I wasn't here to defend the Chiefs in my home's honor because all everybody was saying on the show is that the Chiefs ain't going to do nothing. Actually, Mookie was the one that was telling you guys, as long as you got my homes, you got that defense, you got a chance. And I feel like all year long, we tried to pinpoint negatives about the Chiefs when we never tried to think about a scenario of, well, their defense is going to keep them in every game. And Mahomes just has to make a couple ones to win. And that's what this playoff run has been all about. That all, all I want is an apology for the Chiefs and keep that same energy. Because all year long, they were doubted. An apology? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, an I'll apology. be dead before I apologize. <laughs> There's absolutely no chance in hell. What I will say is this. I'll get my two cents off and then I'll uh, take a little bit of a break from talking. But 
Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs. Absolutely. Congratulations to Patrick Mahomes, third Super Bowl in five appearances. He's doing what is, what is this? What are we doing? <laughs> but at the same time, we don't give a damn. We we <laughs> don't give a damn. I'm sorry. I don't care personally. I was I picked the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game. I was rooting for the San Francisco 49ers like they were my team from when I was five years old. Brock Purdy, you're right. He played an all right game. I give him a strong, a strong seven, but I'm not giving no apology. Why am I going to give an apology to, to a guy that's, that's been as dominant as he's been? I mean, it, it was the safe choice. Congratulations for making the safe choice, yeah. I guess. But there's no way in hell you could get me, of all people, to apologize for shit talking to Chiefs. Maybe those other guys, maybe those other guys could give you an apology, but there's no way in hell that me, of all people, is going to give you an apology for talking shit on Kansas City. So True. I'll leave that yeah. to them. Did you nuts. have the Dolphins or the Chiefs at any point this season in your rankings? Of course. Oh, I'm good <laughs> Did you have them beating the Chiefs in that. the playoffs? Hey, hey, that one, I said I'm going down with the ship. I said I'm probably going to be wrong, but we go and we ride with the ship until it falls down. Now, uh, listen. We'll, uh, we'll take uh, that one on the chin, though. I, I'm not going to let Drew try to say it was a safe choice. Mm, and you want to know why? Because in the last two years, Adels, who was the one arguing that Mahomes wasn't a Hall of Famer? Oh, oh Jesus. Wasn't with Jesus Drew. Christ. Who was the one that said that when he lost Tyreek Hill, Mahomes had to prove himself again? Unfortunately. It was Drew. Who was the one that had the Chiefs missing the playoffs last year? Unfortunately, it was Drew. It was, it was Drew. Had, had, had the Chiefs missing the playoffs. I respect it. And, and now it's the Thank easy you. choice. I'd be, I'd be the right up here saying choice. the same thing. Thank you. It's not the easy choice. choice. I'd be the same thing. I don't think Kansas City was the easy choice, though, because coming into the playoffs, we're not going to sit here and act like they were overwhelming favorites they outside were. of that Dolphins game. They were underdogs against the Bills. They were underdogs against the Ravens. Whether you think they should have been underdogs or not, that's a different conversation. But going into both of those games, I mean, I think all of us, or the over majority at this table, had the Bills advancing, had the Ravens advancing. The only one that we switched on, or quote-unquote switch or flipped, was once we got to the Super Bowl. Because once they beat that Ravens team who had an historic defense, and you had Lamar, second-time MVP, once they beat Josh Allen, the Bills, who had been rolling the, the second half of the season, that's when I feel like our eyes, or at least my eyes, opened up, which sounds silly looking back on it when you have Patrick Mahomes in that defense. But they had just been so mediocre for so many weeks. They The last eight weeks of the regular season, they were 4-4. Four and four. They were not this dominant team rolling into the playoffs with these Super Bowl. I don't want to see expectations. Of course, Mahomes expecting a Super Bowl, but from the outside looking in, I don't think the overwhelming majority of people – thought the Chiefs were going to repeat that at least to me coming into the playoffs that was not the the conversations that was being had at this table or even online on social media on, on other media networks too so right to them we're getting to this game but from now going forward they they very much have like a a New England-esque feel where the regular season just doesn't matter like for 18 weeks it really doesn't matter what they do as long as they're healthy going into the playoffs that's what that's what matters because if they could look as bad as they looked for a decent port, a decent portion of this season and are still able to turn it on and flip the switch where we say, can they flip the switch? We talk about other teams. Most teams can't. The Chiefs are able to flip the switch. They did it this postseason run. So going forward, they could be the number one seed. They could be a wild card seven seed, but you still have to give them the same respect. I'm not giving an apology. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, not. that's just shout out to the, uh, to the, to the Chiefs. They got the W. They win another Super Bowl looking like a dynasty, but I'm definitely not giving an apology for thinking a team that was as good as the Niners could beat them. I will say I give an apology for picking the Dolphins over them. That's the only one I'll really give an apology for. But the rest of them, I felt the Bills could have won. I felt the Ravens could have won those games. Both games, I felt like they could have won. And then the Niners, another team that had an opportunity to win this game, they just couldn't do it. So I'm not giving an apology. But the Chiefs definitely get all the respect in the world for winning the Super Bowl. You know, this we, we talked about it before. This would have been the hardest – Super Bowl run in NFL history if according they would have beat the Niners, yep, according yes. to DVOA. And they did it. it uh, they accomplished it. You know, in overtime, they got the W. So shout out to the Chiefs. Yeah, I had the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl the entire season. And there was a lot of criticism early on in the year. And, well, I'm just saying, Drew, they're underdogs for hey, Buffalo. First, on the first road. repeat in 20 years. They're underdogs for Buffalo on the road, Baltimore on the road, and San Francisco. And to act first, like they're first. favorites and this was the easy choice, I think is misconstrued because all year long, people are looking to find the way to devalue the Chiefs and why they are the best team in the UFC. Uh, number one, they go against the second, third, fourth, and sixth offenses in the playoffs. 
and they hold them to 15 points per game. The Dolphins score seven. The Ravens score 10. And yesterday, they were the more opportunistic team. And specifically in the second half, when the Niners outplayed them pretty notably in first, they came out, their defense stepped up, and the offense made some insane plays. And they go to the overtime period, and that's when Patrick Mahomes basically puts the icing on the cake. But I think it's honestly unreasonable to say, Drew, that this team was the easy choice because a lot of people had them outside their top fives just two months ago. And a lot of people had them losing in different parts of the postseason because we were looking to find a new team, especially Baltimore. It could have been Cincinnati. I felt like this could have been Buffalo's year. And I felt like the Bills were the best team, the, the best chance to upset them on the road in the division round. Them, man. Uh, always the best team. Well, you got the best yeah. Fucking Josh. That's disrespectful to the Ravens, honestly. Ravens had it all. They just blew it. I agree with that. I do kind of agree with that, too. I mean, the Chiefs stuck to the ground and the Ravens didn't. And that's honestly what allowed them to, in the second half, control that game. We're going to get into if the Chiefs are a dynasty. We're going to get into Kyle Shanahan. But I said this after the Bills game. I said it after the Ravens game. If it wasn't this year with this Kansas City team to get dethroned, if it wasn't to see a new champion to Josh to get his ring, if it was Lamar or Shanahan, it feels like... It's going to be the Chiefs damn near every year. I don't want to get stuck in the, mo- in the moment and say they're going to go in three feet. They're going to win five and seven years. Anything crazy. But all of the outside of the issues they had offensively throughout the season, just in the Super Bowl, where last season against the Eagles, Mahomes was damn near perfect, right? We had uh, multiple conversations about was that the best performance in a Super Bowl in a loss by Jalen Hurts, where outside that fumble, he was insane. They put up 35 points. They score with less than two minutes remaining around the two-minute warning. They did all they could. The Chiefs made mistakes in this game. They made multiple mistakes in this game. You had the Mahomes interception. You had the Pacheco fumble. You had the other fumble by Pacheco that he was able to to retain. You had that drive at the end of, of the of regulation where MBS catches the ball six yards down the field. He runs 10 yards backwards, and, and now you're in a second or third and long. You had all of these problems and issues and mistakes by the Kansas City Chiefs, and I was waiting this whole time for the Niners to take advantage because they were having momentum play after momentum play on defense, and this really went from both sides where the defenses were the ones that showed out. I know the score is around 47, 48 points, but I came away from this saying these defenses played their ass off. The fourth quarter, they were able to score consistently, but on both sides of the ball, defenses were making big play after big play. They were forcing turnovers. They were were forcing mistakes from the opposition. But then the other side, just no one was able to really take momentum one way or the other. That's why the, the whole game, we had some, you know, at the park, we had some casuals. We had some diehard football fans. The casuals like, yo, this game sucks. And I'm sitting here like, this game's kind of great. It's like it's 10 to 3. You had some big defensive plays. You had a couple big offensive plays that throw by Mahomes in between two defenders to McCole Hardman. One of the best throws of the season. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a great game, but after every after every turnover, you had CMC fumble, opposite side Chiefs go three and out. The Pacheco yeah. fumble, the 49ers punt in four plays. The Mahomes yeah. interception, the 49ers go three and out. So each time you had this momentum pull, no team was able to capitalize. Mm-hmm. And if the 49ers wanted to win that Super Bowl, it was evident. You had to had to capitalize on these opportunities. You can't let Mahomes be a seven point, be in a seven point game at really any point in the game and feel comfortable, let alone in the fourth quarter, given the opportunity to tie the game, possibly win the game. Of course, they go ahead and win in overtime. But the Niners had chance after chance after chance to not put the game away because it's Patrick Mahomes and at any point he could make a comeback. We saw that the first time against the Niners being down 10 in the fourth quarter, you would think that they would learn from that and say, we really got to put our foot on the gas. But shout out to uh, to Steve Wilk, shout out to, to Spag, because I thought both of their defensive game plans, the, the amount of um, different looks they were able to show. I know we were talking prior to this game how Steve Wilkes he doesn't disguise much. I thought he did a great job disguise. They they even mentioned on the broadcast disguising different looks, setting different blitzes to pressure Mahomes and, and to make him uncomfortable. Sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. Like that big play to Rasheed Rice in, in the fourth quarter in that last drive where they got a big 20, 30 yard chunk play, set him up in the field goal range. And Kelsey as well. Kelsey too, who had a big play of his own, but it just really came down to this one game. You were able to make the mistakes we talked about in the pregame saying, if you want to win, you got to have the Chiefs to make mistakes. Mahomes throws an interception. Mahomes did not have any turnovers this playoff run. He was barely taking sacks. We were able to get pressure, we were able to cause a turnover. You still ended up losing the game. It really does hurt. When you talk about these two teams, the, the margin for error is uh, razor thin. 
you have to be perfect. And both teams made their sh- their fair share of mistakes. This was a defensive battle all the way. And the story will be made about Mahomes and Andy Reid because they are the head of the snake, Travis Kelsey. And what Mahomes is doing is it's the greatest start to a career that we've ever seen in, in football history. But football is a team game, and that's often forgotten. Whether you talk about Tom Brady, Payne Manning, Drew Brees, all the all-time greats, Joe Montana, whoever it may be. When you win a Super Bowl, it's because you have a complete all-around team. And the reason why I always believed in the Chiefs as being a team that can win the Super Bowl is because I don't feel like Mahomes was playing all that well all year long. And in the playoffs, he started playing like himself. And him playing like himself gives the offense a much higher floor. And then on defense, they were always an elite unit. There was only one team all year that scored over 25 points against them. That was the Green Bay Packers. This was statistically the hardest run that a team has ever went through. The Chiefs are the first team in NFL history to go through four of the top six offenses with the Dolphins, Ravens, Bills, and Niners and beat them all, like John mentioned. This defense is something that continues to impress me. It's the youngest defense in the NFL. Mm. And you look at how Chris Jones played having six pressures. He went unblocked on that third and four in overtime that forced Purdy to throw it away. And that made them settle for a field goal. And the Chiefs driving down the field, scoring a touchdown. That's what iced the game. Chris Jones was all over this game. Leo Chanel forcing that fumble on Christian McCaffrey, making some great plays in the run game. They held Christian McCaffrey to 3.4 yards per carry. Everybody's talking about this being a big CMC day. They shut down the run game, which reminds me what happened last in the Super Bowl against the Eagles when the Eagles were a dominant rushing attack and the Chiefs went in there and and they shut down their rushing attack too. Trent McDuffie in the plays he made against Debo Samuel. He was sticky against him all night long in coverage. He had three pass breakups. McDuffie's an all-pro for a reason. Sneed and his physicality at the line, jamming Brandon Ayuk. Carl Loftus had a big impact. I think Mike Pennell also had a big impact. I mean, there was so many guys that stepped up all over the field, and this defense is the biggest reason why the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And when you give an all-time great player like Patrick Mahomes a chance to win the game at the end, he's going to do it. In overtime, fourth and one conversion, Nick Bosa overcommits. Then later on in the drive, he runs for a 20-plus yard gain. The final play, getting McCall Hardman open, scheming him up, the same motion they used against the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, Andy Reid, if you give Andy Reid, Mahomes, and this Chiefs offense a chance to breathe and have life at the end of the game, they're going to win it. I think this far in Mahomes' career, he's won three Super Bowls down 10. In each of them, he's been down 10 He's won on the road as or not on the road, but as an underdog in the playoffs. I think he's nine and one, I believe, or it might be just in totality in his career as an underdog. He's nine and one. Even when it doesn't seem like anything is going for this team, they still find a way to win. And that's why they're the dynasty of the 2020s. It's reasons like that. They find ways to win football games and. That game yesterday was one of the best games that I've seen, and it was an all-around effort by everybody. Well said. I think the big part of this run for the Chiefs was just Steve Spagnuolo. Since he's coming for this team, they've went to four Super Bowls, and they've won three. And the only year they didn't was where Cincinnati, where Mahomes actually played kind of poorly in that game. And we joke about it in my family. That was the one game my brother went to at Arrowhead. He hasn't went since. They've won two Super Bowls. He's a diehard Chief fan. But... The biggest thing for the Chiefs this year was, in the last two years, they'll become an elite pass defense without Tyree Kill. And they've won back-to-back Super Bowls without him. And what's allowed them to do that is Travis Kelsey. Right now, he's one of the most prolific playoff performers we've ever seen. Last week, or two weeks ago, versus the Ravens, he broke Jerry Rice's all-time record for most playoff catches. And he's still just 33 years old. He hasn't played the same amount of playoff games as Jerry. He's had more targets. But yesterday, we saw in the biggest moment where they needed to give Harrison Bucker a more manageable field goal than the 38 yard line would have been a long one. It's Travis on a deep cross over the middle or a deep drag route, and he's taking it inside to a great spot for Bucker. And he and he reached 19 miles per hour really? on that run, and I think he cleared like 16 all season long. That's actually pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then you look at Rasheed Rice as well. He only had 39 yards, but in big moments, he was able to move the chains. The McCole Harmon play was insane because I wondered if Tayshawn Gibson could have maybe undercut that pass and he tracked it better. In the biggest moment of the year, McCole Harmon has two of the biggest plays. MVS doesn't catch a football all year long, but in the playoffs, that got hurt. he saw it last year for Cincinnati. MVS makes that paycheck he gets worth it because he's made some pretty damn – he's always open. I mean, we were talking about this last night. MVS is open often. 
It's just he's got to catch the football consistently, and he's done that in the postseason. So uh, what this Chiefs run is, it's far and away a dynasty. And to me as a Steeler fan, I became a fan of the team right when they're on the cusp of it, and they didn't get it done. Kansas City's made themselves a dynasty, and Mahomes is just 28 years old. It's for all of us like me that weren't old enough to watch Tom Brady's career from start to finish. Well, now you're going to watch it. Yuck. I guess I'll go. Um, of course, Kansas City, you have to give them nothing but credit. You talked about that Travis Kelsey catch. I'll say this. Warner saved his legacy on that play after where he defends Kelsey for that touchdown because I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. The two plays that ended up being the detriment to the Niners defense was when they were in man coverage. The one where Fred Warner is playing defense on Travis Kelsey. They just run across her. You mentioned it. Kelsey just puts on the burners, gets open. And then the one to Rasheed Rice. Again, another crossover the middle of the field. They just can't keep up with them. And Rasheed Rice is able to get a big gain. I'm screaming at my TV as much as I can, of course. Why are you playing man? Why are you playing man coverage against Travis Kelsey? You would had such a great game plan all along. And for you to blow it in those moments was kind of bittersweet for me to watch. More bitter than sweet, of course. Uh, but if, but I look at it, and I have to give pr- credit where credit is due. I said it. You guys get 24 hours of me being hate-free when it comes to Kansas City. This is this is, this is is something that, that we thought that we'd never see. Back-to-back champions, first time in 20 years. Patrick Mahomes, three championships and, and five attempts at, at, at getting it done. I mean – what else is there yeah. to say? This guy, this guy is an unbelievable talent. He made he made plays when you needed him to make them. Uh, I look at that the the last two drives that he had on offense, and there was no part of me that thought, unfortunately, that he wasn't going to be able to get it done. Even when they had the fourth down attempt, even when you mentioned Joel that play where MVS runs backwards six yards after gaining six yards. When they got it into third and one, fourth and one, in, in that type of situation. I just never felt as if the Niners would be able to get that last stop. I was hopeful. I was praying. But I just knew with the way that he was just carrying himself throughout the entirety of the game, never was down on himself, even after the interception. You mentioned it. Any turnover in this game was not capitalized outside of the the muffed punt, which uh, mm-hmm. it, it was an unfortunate play where it just hits off the the – the kid's foot and of course nothing that you're able to do for it but Kansas City was able to capitalize get into the end zone but I want to say this I look at Kansas City and you're right this was the year to beat them if you were if there was any year to get them it would be this year how can you not feel like this is just something that can be destined for a three repeat. The only thing that comes to mind is what's what's going to happen to Chris Jones is he going to come back is he going to is he going to take a pay cut? Because obviously that was a huge situation coming in that he missed week one and then got the contract situation handled. Legereus Sneed, obviously being one of the best corners in football. Is he going to, to make a return? Is he going to get his money? There's just a, the two star players on this defense. I know McDuffie obviously is still on that rookie contract. Uh, having him being an all pro corner himself, having a great game in the Super Bowl, being great all postseason long. It's just looking like those were the two those are the two questions going into next season, but they don't even need that third championship in a row to consider themselves a dynasty to me. Three and, and five attempts, that's pretty that's pretty successful to me. And and going back to back uh for the first time that we've seen in 20 years, the last team we saw that was the last dynasty in football, the the New England Patriots. I mean, you have to give them their their due diligence. As much as I may not like to say these words at all. Most definitely, you have to you have to give credit where credit is due. This is the dynasty. It was impressive because the you don't see it often because of how great yeah. the 49ers pass uh, mm-hmm. pass attack is, how great their their receivers are. But um, the Chiefs played man on seventy percent of plays. They played yeah. cover zero and cover one amongst the highest that that the 49ers have seen damn near all season long. I think the only other team that had more cover zero cover one was that Cleveland game way back in, you know, middle of the season, they end up losing that game. But it, it shows that one Spags is going to give you different looks, but the personnel this team has, there is not many teams in the NFL that could straight up go man to man against these 49ers receivers and be able to cover Ayuk, Debo and Kittle. I mean, I think combined Purdy was nine for 20 when he was targeting those three guys. We saw Juwan Jennings have a big game. Hughes check had a catch. Um, but when it came to those big three receivers who had been, you know, carrying the load for this offense outside of CMC all season long, 
how I don't want to call it easy because that would be, you know, I think taken away from how difficult it is, but how easy it almost looked at times for Trent McDuffie. There there was a point there going into the fourth quarter. You're like, is Trent McDuffie the MVP of this game? That's how great he was playing defensively. Exactly. And you, you, you mentioned the, the free agents they have, Chris Jones, Sneed. Mahomes' contract is so team-friendly that they could move around money. I still don't know if they'll have enough to be able to resign both of those guys, but they'll probably have enough to at least resign one of them. And they're, you know they're going to be adding more talent through free agency, more through the drafts. They were able to rebuild that offensive line in one offseason. They've been able to rebuild this defense really in one offseason because last year the defense was really good. Now it's elite. It's still super young. And you know they're going to be adding more receiving help too because I know Brett Beach is going to go into this offseason and say, Outside of locking up our top guys, got to get some tackle help, but let's give Mahomes a real dude out there. He's doing it with Kelsey and MVS had some nice plays, and Justin Watson showed up, and of course you have Kelsey and these guys, but go out and get Mahomes the number one, and and let's really try to build something here. The fact that you could move off Tyree Kill and go back-to-back and have some of the numbers Mahomes is having in these playoffs and these big moments, just finding different guys, just being able to almost band-aid it up and go on the Super Bowl run, it's crazy what they're able to do. It's pretty beautiful, too, because the Chiefs have had issues all year long, right? They've had questionable tackle play. They've had suspect wide receivers. And while they have holes, what's matter most of them is that their strengths are something no teams can match. Their quarterback, their defense built off D-tackle, cornerback, safeties are underrated, Mike Edwards and Justin Reed. And then, of course, their edge rushers. They're able to generate pressure in many different ways because of the coaching itself. And I think that's number one way to we see in the NBA, we see in the NFL, you mitigate your weaknesses and you shield them by having a stronger strength than your opponent. And I mean, this was uh, sorry, does cut yeah. you off, but this was the third game in the last three years that Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle have been held to under 100 scrimmage yards together. Yes, La- the first time was last year in the NFC Championship game when Brock Purdy got hurt All against right. the Eagles. It was earlier this year against the Browns when Debo got hurt. And this year, I mean, Debo did go out for some plays in Kittle, too, but for the most part, they were healthy, and they were held to under 100 scrimmage yards. I just want to say, like, the job Trent McDuffie did on on Debo Samuel, I I think that matchup right there defined the game for me. Mm -hmm. And I think it showed that I I think Debo's a tremendous receiver. Mm -hmm. But that right there shows to me the difference between him and Ayuk, is that against press man-to-man coverage, Ayuk can get open. Debo Samuel is more of a zone receiver. He struggles against that physicality. And against McDuffie, I mean, there, there was some plays where McDuffie was running the route for him, and he almost came up with an interception. It was on a dig. I, I think McDuffie cemented himself as an all-pro player in this in this game. And Legereus Sneed probably won't be signed back, but the fact that they have a guy like McDuffie they can mm-hmm. fall back on as an all-pro it makes all the difference in the world. Debo led the Niners with 11 targets, and that was their number one key, their X factor to winning. He had three catches, and when I, and Trent McDuffie was targeting coverage, 40 snaps, seven targets, two receptions allowed, nine total yards, and three forced incompletions. It looked like McDuffie just knew every route he was going to run, like every time they lined up. I think, and you know, it's interesting because the Chiefs, like you mentioned, they're 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 a pretty young team. I think overall as a team they're like the eighth or the seventh youngest team in the nfl seventh yeah something like that and they're, they're they've become a dynasty with these young players you know i think it's interesting that they you know they got mcduffie they got george chris jones sneed and them boys that defense has become a leader yeah. and it, it's interesting how the browns game is kind of equivalent to this game because the browns are similar in a sense where they like to run a lot of man and they got the same not the same talent but they got denzel they got martin emerson and um, I'm forgetting, I'm blanking on the second guy's name for sure. Greg um, Newsom? Newsom? Yes, yes. And they got him too. And they run this a similar man, 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 man. We're just going to man you to death. And the Chiefs defense is gritty. It's physical. It gets into you. And they just make plays after plays. And then, like you mentioned, when you have Mahomes, who's the best in the world at what he does, he doesn't need many opportunities. You know, he doesn't need many receivers. Going into this offseason, you know, they don't have a lot to build up, which means it's going to be easier to, like, solely – work on one specific thing like the wide receiver room, like the tackles. And they're going to be right back at it next year. They may lose Snead, you know, but you trust in this team to bring in talent from the draft that can automatically work. You trust in this team to bring in whoever, and they can be an elite talent. They could be all pro. So, like, you trust in the development of this team. You trust in what they do in the offseason. And we we keep we kept saying it all year, you know, if this was going to be the year, Josh, Lamar, can you do it? And now next year, they're probably going to have a better team 
you know, it's going to be hard to really just count out this team every year. I think, th- like, the Niners had an opportunity to win this game, no doubt in my mind. But at the same time, the way they went about it in overtime, you know, you let them – you got the ball first. You went to get a field goal. And then on top of that, your defense pretty much just got slaughtered throughout the throughout that whole overtime. I really feel like that was the game right there. You should have went – you should have let them go first. You should have let them – go down the field, and then you can dictate what goes on. Even if your defense had a chance to stop them, then you would have been great. But I think the Niners' defense played well. You know, I think they made some plays, got some stops. You know, Fred and all them boys, they did their thing. Offensively, they just couldn't be consistent on a drive-to-drive basis. They, that defense, we talked about, that defense has pretty much shut down everybody but maybe Josh Allen. You know, and even Josh Allen had a couple moments with his receivers where they could have been there and they couldn't make them, play, them big plays to win in the game. And that's the same thing for this Niners offense. They could not consistently make big-time plays to win this game. And one thing that has been getting overlooked, I think, is Dre Greenlaw going out yeah. because his replacement, that's Burks, he was getting slaughter. picked on. Yeah. He was getting picked on a lot. I'm looking at the numbers, or I'm trying to find numbers. I believe he allowed nine catches on nine receptions. I'll yeah, I'll confirm that, but that was what I saw. No, as soon as he line. got in, they immediately kept putting Kelsey on that side. That was in the second half, correct, mm-hmm. when the Chiefs were down 10-3. And we saw leading up to the Harrison Bucker 57-yard field goal, which is funny how quickly that record lasted for Jake Moody. Yeah. Mahomes on third and four has his rush lower on his shoulder. The next play, it's a read option straight in the middle. Nothing but green grass for 20 yards. That was green that, also, yeah. That was exactly what set up the field goal itself to get in the 10-6. A drive later, they're up because of that punt. That was botched. And nine catches, 97 or nine catch, nine targets, nine yeah. catches, 67 yards. And Mahomes had 66 rushing. Half of those are probably on his side. For me, I think um, the biggest factor in this game was the pressure that Spags got. The unblocked pressure specifically. The Niners have been susceptible to it all year long. But against the Chiefs, when Purdy when Purdy was pressured with interior pressure, he averaged 1.9 yards per play. When they got pressure from the edge, KC did. Purdy's yards per attempt went up 9.1 according to ESPN stats and info. Getting interior pressure was the game plan, and Chris Jones, that's where he thrives as his bread and butter. They blitz party on 51% of dropbacks, so the name of the game was was pressure, and they don't have a four-man rush that can get after party, so they have to use these pressure packages, mm-hmm. and they generated nine unblocked pre- pressures, which is the most they've generated all season long. Two of them coming in the most important moments, and sure. I think in these games, we tend to kind of over exaggerate everything because I I think Kyle Shanahan called a great game I I thought the chess match between him and Spags it went back and forth they each got their number of wins both respectively I thought it was an even matchup but it's those plays when they matter the most third and four in the fourth quarter McDuffie coming unblocked on that slot blitz yep that right there if Purdy connects with with Ayuk that's a first down that's the game they win it right there Moody walks off the field, hitting the game-winning field goal. Yeah. That's the game. But setting that pressure in that moment, McDuffie coming unblocked and batting down the pass that gave the Chiefs the ability to go down the field and kick a field goal, we saw a similar play in overtime where Chris Jones went unblocked. And in the fourth quarter at the start of it, at first and 10, that touchdown that, that Brock Purdy missed to Debo Samuel on the sideline, Debo had a step on the defenders, but who was in his face? It was Chris Jones. Chris Jones was right there. He beat the guard instantly, and he was right there affecting the throw. There are some similarities between that that Brock Purdy throw and the Jimmy Garoppolo throw, but the main difference oh, is that Jimmy Garoppolo had open space, and he, he missed Emmanuel Sanders completely. There was Chris Jones, 6'6", six, six, six in your face, and you missed him. Garoppolo had a clean platform, though, in that throw. He did. He did That's right? what I'm saying. Yeah, was a straight That's up a best. difference. Yeah. Like, I thought Purdy played a good game. I thought he, this was the best game he's played all Easily. playoffs. Yes. Easily. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. From start to finish. He had some moments like, you know, the 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 in the in OT McDuffie tipping it up. Bolton almost coming down yeah, with it. A couple of that McDuffie was actually a dot. He threw him a dot. He threw Debo a dot that Debo just could not hang on to. I remember but thinking those, the exact same thing. I'm like, yo, he went full. like He put it only where Debo could get it, and Debo almost sold him terribly. Yeah, you know, th- those instances are really the only ones you can point to and say, you know, those are maybe negative moments. But, you know, this was Purdy's best game of the playoffs it was. It was by far. 255 yards, one touchdown, no turnovers. Only sacked one time, too. It's surprising they blitzed him as much as he did because that's where he's been his best this year, and he handled it relatively well. He just had 15 completions and. 
the biggest thing to me was the fact they never got George Kittle going, yeah. right? No. Beyond not getting Debo, it was all CMC with 160 yards in scrimmage. But if Ayuk's going to have 49 and Kittle's going to have 14 and Samuel has 33... I was just sorry. Kittle had four yards. I was, just, I, was just, uh, I was just telling Dell in the car. I was just, I was just excited. Purdy ain't fuck up. That's that's yeah. really all I could ask for. I was excited that Purdy played a clean game, no turnovers. When Mahomes got the turnover, I was like, all right, if yeah. he is gonna make a turnover, right. it's fine because Mahomes just did it. <laughs> it's so okay. But I was just excited that Purdy could walk out that game with little to no criticism because he didn't. He may not have played a great game to where he could have gotten the win, but he didn't put them in a position where they, you know, they lost the game. I, I think Purdy was. Basically, what everyone's been saying he is for the most part. I shouldn't say everyone. I shouldn't say everyone because there's people out there who is pushing MVP. There's people out there pushing, you know, top five, top 10 quarterback in the league. But I think what Purdy was or what he was in the Super Bowl is kind of what most people were saying he is is that in Shanahan's system with these weapons, he's going to look good, right? He's going to have moments. But for the 49ers, having a great regular season, just going to the Super Bowl, winning the NFC, winning the NFC West, that's not good enough. You know, like you have to win a Super Bowl if you're the 49ers. Shanahan is 0 3 now, 0 2 as a head coach. Getting there, it, it might sound like, you know, the silver spoon kid who had everything growing up, but that's just that's just how it is. You know, if you're not getting over the hump, if you're not winning a Super Bowl, it doesn't really matter if you're San Francisco 49ers fan. That's kind of how I felt away coming from this game where Brock Purdy was solid. You said a seven. I think you tweeted a seven as well. He was around that range. He did not go out there and lose you the game by any means. But there was probably a couple plays that he left on the field where if you have that superhuman quarterback, if you have that quarterback who's one day going to be a Hall of Famer, they probably make those plays, the throw to Debo, the, the other throw on third down at the end of the fourth quarter, where if you're able to pick up that first down, if you're able to complete that pass and get a touchdown, you win that game. And everything is different. And Shanahan sits here with a Super Bowl ring and, and Purdy's looking up at a $200 million extension, all of these other, fa other these factors come into play. But for the most part, Purdy was kind of what I think he's been in terms of where he lands in the NFL landscape. Mm -hmm. It's just when you're going up against Patrick Mahomes, you're going up against Andy Reid, your deficiencies are going to show. Let me ask you guys a quick question. Do you think that the Niners should have went for it on fourth down instead of kicking the field goal in OT? You would have left the Chiefs on around, what was it? The, the, ten. Uh, the 10, I was going to say the seven, the, around that yeah, yard yeah, line. Seven. To me, what I would have liked to see, although the play call was fine, Chris Jones just showed why he's one of the best D tackles in the game, one of the best defensive players, period. Obviously, putting pressure on, on Brock Purdy, Purdy, forcing him to, to make a throw that he didn't want to make. You see it afterwards. Purdy realizes, damn, I messed up. I just had to give him a decent ball, and he would have probably gotten to the end zone. To me, in that situation, third and four, where they had a similar play and, and a little bit earlier on, I think, in regulation, where – you ran the ball, and then you went for it on fourth. I think in that situation, you give the ball to McCaffrey, who got you all the way down the field, either on the ground or, of course, through the air where he had that screen pass that went for a good amount of yards. To me, I know that they abused McCaffrey in this game, got the 30 touches that I anticipated him to get in this game. I think you give him another chance in that situation, especially with the way that he had been running the football in that last drive. You take two opportunities. You try your best to get into the end zone because you know Kansas City is going to try to go down this field. And obviously, we know how the story went where they actually did score the game-winning touchdown on that following drive. But you have to at least go out with a puncher's chance. And the defense had been playing great. I understand that. But you saw in the, the, the drive right before regulation, they were able to march down the field with relative ease to the point that they almost scored a touchdown. I, I think I would have just liked to see them be a little bit more aggressive in overtime, personally. Mm. You can always point to a couple of plays in the game that are gonna gonna change it. I, I thought for most for the most part, Andy Reid's third and one play calls were terrible. Where yeah. he was trying to force feed yeah. Pacheco down the middle. I felt like it was the most predictable. It was thing. obvious early on Pacheco yeah. did not have it. I, I thought Andy yeah. Reid, there were some moments in situational football that I just I wasn't a big fan of. I was watching the game with Riff, and I, I look, I look next to, I look at him directly. He was sitting right next to me. It was the fourth quarter with a couple minutes left. Mahomes had the ball, and he's just staring at the TV, and he says, "It's inevitable." <laughs> and uh, that's exactly how I feel because in the fourth quarter and overtime, Mahomes was sixteen for twenty-two, one hundred eighty-seven total yards, one touchdown, fourteen first downs. Uh, since 2006, oh my God, these have been the quarterbacks with the highest QBR 
in a Super Bowl run since 2006. Number one is 2019 Mahomes. Number three is 2023 Mahomes. Number five is 2022 Mahomes. Mahomes owns three of the top five QBR Super Bowl runs since 2006. The other two are Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers that fill out that top five. What he's doing, and this is why I think he's greater than Tom Brady, he's just playing at a high level, high, higher level. It, that, it is what it is. You saw yeah. his comments about Brady? I did, what and I say? respect it. And, and Mahomes is the most humble guy. He's not going to ever say he's the best. A reporter asked him, do you think you're the greatest? Something along those lines. Um, and he said, well, Brady beat me in the Super Bowl. It's it's going to be hard for me to kind of admit that since he beat me. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. when I said that, man. At like, least he knows. At least he knows. He'll I never be the coach. Home. After winning your third chip, I respect being that humble still. We were sitting there. We was watching the game. You know, shout out to Dells, man. He had so much snacks and eats, and he had a couple nice drinks. Um, I wish I was there. We took um a little... You know, we took a little little gummy, and I kid you not, I kid you not, I was so fucking focused on the game. I didn't say a word he for probably like two really quarters, wasn't. bro. I was just sitting there locked in on the game, just watching it, just so, so high. It, <laughs> it was insane. But yeah, man, it was inevitable. Once it got to the fourth, and I was like, it's over, bro. It doesn't matter. Once it's, so, it's If it's that close, like... If, he has the ball, it's so no. over. Anyone going up against the Chiefs fourth quarter, you need a three-touchdown lead. Yeah, if, I'm up three, if I'm up 21, I'm like, all right, I could breathe a little why bit. Why couldn't the Niners' defense clutch, man? Why? I, I really... They clutched it, time after time the first three quarters. I in the first believe. three quarters when it didn't... Like, come on. Let's you be let's be real. Points in the first half. I mean, it's hard to you know come away from that and be like the fucking defense. The Niners' like, offense didn't clutch up. They they had two right. third and four situations and they didn't convert. They 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 Listen, traded touchdowns for field goals. I look at it like this: two situations. Brock Purdy put the the ball back into the defense's court. Although you're right, guys. How many times did we see the Niners just flip flop back and forth, just giving the ball to each other, three and out, three and out, three and out? I'm with you guys true. there. But no, for sure. But two two times back to back where Purdy gives the the ball over to the defense. Hey guys, give me a stop. We go home. We win a championship. Unfortunately, the Niners weren't able to do so. We we see the the Kansas City Chiefs go and, and kick the field goal, send it into OT. Then we see it go in, in overtime. They do their job again. They kick the three. Although I would have liked to see them be more aggressive. They go up. Hey, per, her Purdy hands it over. The defense hands it over to the defense. Say, hey, we just need to stop. Fourth down, we see time and time and again, third downs, third downs. They just weren't able to 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 make that final stop. And of course, we know how the rest goes. The the Kansas City Chiefs are now celebrating as champions. But it, it's it's tough to sit with where you're right, guys. Through one quarters one through three, this Niners defense was the best that it's been all postseason long. But then in quarter four, it all fell apart, and the Chiefs were were it, well, Mahomes and, and and company, of course, were were just able to do whatever they wanted. Kelsey must have gotten angry because he got a majority of his love in this in the fourth quarter in OT where she writes another one where the ball that went to to Warner, well to Kelsey that Warner was playing defense on, Rasheed Rice was wide open in the middle of the field and Rasheed Rice just you feel how comfortable he is even as a rookie. He feels like he has that that staying in the team to to get vocal with Mahomes. Not many people have that right. Versi Rice has been that special of a talent for them. And he goes to Mahomes, he's like, listen, bro, I get it. It's Kelsey, but you got to see me there. I'm good enough. I can make plays. And he validated himself making that big time catch in OT. You got to give credit to the rookie there too. A lot of the Chiefs, they're, they're big time players, made big time plays when you needed them most. No doubt. Let me ask you a question. I was, uh, I forgot who I was watching on TikTok. It was somebody, he, had, he was talking about the Niners offense. And he was talking about how Andy Reid has adapted, you know, Spag's defense, he's adapted. And he says, Shanahan, like, do you think he was talking about how Shanahan didn't use Purdy enough in the play action department or he didn't use him enough in terms of just using his legs to make plays and extend plays like, um, you know, running out, drifting out of the pocket. Do you think Shanahan should do that, should have done that a lot more last game, getting Purdy out the pocket, you know, having him run on his legs? I mean, use his legs to make better plays. I mean, honestly, they were doing it. It was working. This is a this is a conversation that I want to have actually now when it, in regards to Shanahan because mm -hmm. Shanahan is now zero and three went up double digits in in the Super Bowl with the Falcons when they blew the twenty eight to three lead against the Patriots to Mahomes the first time in twenty nineteen and and now in 2024, 2023 season Shanahan called a great game I have no problem with Shanahan called like I really don't and I think the criticism on him 
is mm-hmm. he is becoming a victim of his own genius. He took a team led by Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback to the Super Bowl. And because of that, now we have this expectation with a, a coach who doesn't have, he never had the most quarterback talent at his disposal to win almost every single year. I mean, he's been to what? Four NFC Championship games? Yes. He's been to two Super Bowls in the last five years. The one year they didn't make the NFC Championship game was the year that they were hurt. Their entire roster got hurt. Yeah. Brock Purdy, last pick in the draft for as good as he's become, he was the last pick in the draft. He was a legitimate MVP candidate for a lot of people for the majority of the season and could have won it had it not been for a meltdown against Baltimore. Kyle Shanahan has elevated every quarterback that's walked in through his doors. And talking about adapting, Shanahan has adapted his system completely. Shanahan does not run the same stuff that he ran with Jimmy Garoppolo back then. This is a more pass-heavy offense, and he's kind of gone away of his roots of being just a traditional under-center running football team. There's a lot of shotgun passes. The 49ers had 33 series in this game. 16 started with rushes. They had a 56.2% series conversion rate. 17 started with the pass. They had an 82.4% series conversion rate. Kyle Shanahan called the balance game. Both the run and the pass were working. The pass was working much more, Mm -hmm. and you can argue that maybe he should have leaned into that more. But a criticism I saw after the game was that he should have ran the ball more with CMC. And the numbers across the board show that they were passing it far more efficiently. And CMC on third and four in overtime, he got stuffed on second and four, and that's why they passed it on third and four, and Chris Jones just went unblocked. This is a team that... Look at the offensive line outside Trent Williams. It's not a talented, it's not a talented unit. It's not. They're susceptible. And he's turned the last pick in the draft into a, yeah. a top five statistical quarterback. He's developed Debo, Kittle, Ayuk. I mean, this guy's a mastermind. And he's the greatest coach currently that hasn't won a Super Bowl yet. He's a mastermind. He's a genius. And I, I feel like all criticism that's going towards him. It's lazy. It's lazy because, look, you just run into Mahomes. That's just what it is. It, he's run into Mahomes twice, and he's lost twice. And we see you can play a near-perfect yeah. game, and the margin for error is just yeah. so slim. The Super Bowls he's lost have been the Tom Brady and Bill Bel- uh, Tom Brady and Belichick, Mahomes and Andy Reid. And we've seen this for a while now. I think if you use common sense, this Super Bowl does not fall on Kyle Shanahan. He's not the one that botched a punt inside their own 20-yard line. That led to a touchdown to play later. He's not the one that fumbled after three first rounds in the first drive. I mean, when you are going up against this Chiefs defense on the first drive, you have four players march down the field. It's like a boxing match, but you're kicking the shit out of your opponent in the first two minutes. And then CMC fumbles. That was a three to seven points win right there. And the amount of momentum they lost, despite the Chiefs not scoring, they had three straight passing first downs moving and grooving. I'm thinking to myself, what is going on? I'm like, we're a minute to the game. They're about to score a touchdown. And he's also not the one, in spite of all of that, that got the PAT blocked. In spite of all of those turnovers, they still would have won if that PAT was not blocked. And then in overtime, people criticize him. And Ray pointed this out. I don't really think there's a right way to go. A lot of people said he should have elected to kick off. And if that's the case, let's say you both score touchdowns. It is next point wins. If the Chiefs get the ball next, and they get a field goal, you don't get to match it. So I don't think there was right or wrong answer with the decision to elect to receive, partly because I don't think you want to put the pressure on Brock Purdy to say, you know what, Mahomes scored a touchdown. Okay, now go match that touchdown. That's too much to me. And I felt this was a great play calling game. The same thing in the 2020 Super Bowl, that was not on him. You talk about the Jimmy Garoppolo miss. How many third downs did Garoppolo not read the field and got sacked because he could not make the open throw to the open receiver a couple of times? And then dating back to that Super Bowl with the Falcons, after Julio Jones' 27-yard catch outside the sideline, the next two plays, Matt Ryan takes a 12-yard sack, and then they throw an 8-yard gain. Jake Matthews has a 10-yard penalty. That's 18 yards lost right there. They don't get to kick a field goal. They don't get the chance in that Super Bowl to ice it with four minutes left. They have to punch the Patriots. They'll get a two-point conversion, take the game to overtime, beat them. I think Kyle Shanahan's the most unlucky coach. Yesterday, I was with my brother and our entire family, and I said, I think Kyle Shanahan's the best coach in football because of what he's done at the quarterback position. They said that's an incorrect opinion. I'm like, every year he goes to the playoffs, he goes to the NFC Championship game. He does not have Patrick Mahomes. He is the best offensive play designer in football, and I really do feel for him. He deserves a Super Bowl, and I think a lot of guys in this Niners team did, and a lot of the criticism that they're getting right now has been unfair. He's a, he's a victim of his own success. Yeah. You know, when, when you win that much, 
when he's still one of the younger coaches in the NFL, he's one of the best offense coordinators in Atlanta. Then he comes here and there's success almost immediately. And that's what he's running into. I'm not the first person to say this, but he's been getting compared to Eagles, Andy Reid, where, you know, we knew Andy Reid was one of the best coaches in the NFL, but his one, the one stick against him was he can't win the big game. When he gets to the big moment, he's not able to, at least number one, took him a few years to get to the Super Bowl. Then when he's get to the Super Bowl, he wasn't able to win it. Of course, you go to Kansas City, you draft Patrick Mahomes, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, he, he can win the big game. He just got Patrick Mahomes now. And a bit of a difference because I, I do think Shanahan's probably playing with lesser talent than even Reed had with McNabb and even you know a year or two of Michael Vick when, Michael Vick when he came um, back to the NFL. But the fact that he's doing this with the limited quarter play, quarterback play he's had between Jimmy Garoppolo, all the injuries he sustained through his career, now Brock Purdy, it's easy to sit up here and be like, He's just not clutch. He just blows leads. He doesn't have a feel for the game. You're up 10-0. How do you not win this game? But it's hard when you look at the opposition. You say, well, he's gone up against the two greatest quarterbacks of our lifetime and that the sport has ever seen. He's fallen short and, and just short, right? You know, you're up 28-3 to and won those games. Probably should have won that game. You're up 10 points in that one. fourth quarter. Yeah. The yeah. first time against the Chiefs, if, if – if Jimmy G makes that throw, you win that game. There's a couple game. of throws, though, was more than one he missed. Yeah, and even, yeah, I'm saying the Emmanuel Sanders yeah. throw. But of course, one, there, was, there Jimmy was multiple G stinks, throws. Man. He's not great. Yeah. But you can make the same comment about if Brock Purdy makes that throw to Debo, sure. if he makes the throw on third down. Like, So it's hard for me to really blame Shanahan uh, where they were tough. in they were in a situation to win this game. Brock Purdy had chances to go out there, and if he was, no respect to him, if he was Josh Allen, if he was one of these top quarterbacks that we don't put – in the Mahomes conversation, but it's like a tier below below Mahomes. Mm-hmm. We're like, this is a, a superhuman type quarterback. They probably make those throws. And there's one more thing, too. On that player, Chris Jones gets a free pressure. I want to pull up the play right now. Cole McKivitz is blocking a ghost. I mean, this 49ers offense line is not that good either. I mean, all game long, I was yeah, waiting ghost. for Chris Jones. <laughs> I want to show Dell's this play. Um, there, it's third and four because he can see it. he's close to me. But Cole <laughs> McKivitz blocks nobody, and he's trying to get the end. Look at him right here. Yeah, this was this was pretty well disguised, though. It, it ends You're up right. being cover zero. You weren't expecting to be cover Fair zero. Mike McGlinchey would have put Chris Jones on his ass. All I'm saying. No, he wouldn't have. I don't know. <laughs> 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 ball, so, sorry. Go ahead. They're getting rid of the ball so quickly that I was able to kind of shield those limitations at tackle on the right side of the offensive line. So, I mean, this 49ers team was far and away the most talented in football. But they had some holes in the secondary at safety, at tackle. It wasn't a complete team. And I I feel like their window slowly starts to close. Oh, Brock Purdy's in the last year of his rookie deal next year, right? Yeah. Yes. And so that's going to be a big year. ticket. But after that, you look at this 49ers timeline and say to yourself, it Trey two, Lance, it's I, think the, 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 the big, I think it's two more years because you yeah. get four yeah. years. So you get two yeah. more years. Hair, man. Relax, relax, John. You're getting but a little ahead of yourself. Yeah. You're going to have to pay Brian Ayuk and yeah. a couple of other players in that defense, I'd imagine. I, I think so. what you're trying to refer to is that Brock Purdy, because he was the last pick in the draft and not undrafted, uh, he, if he was undrafted, he would have been eligible for a contract extension yeah. after this year. Yeah. Next year is when he's eligible for one. So, uh, of course, based off how Brock Purdy, the numbers he's put up, how he's played, he's going to demand a contract extension after next year. So the Niners have one more year to decide if we are going to accumulate all this money to this quarterback and then now build our, out our roster moving forward, which, you know, that's a tough decision. It is. I think you have, you I, have I know, two years. I know Purdy more than back. most at the table, and it, it strikes me as a guy he'd take a friendly. That's just me personally. Though. Mm. This is Can also I, his one chance to really cash in and change his whole family's life. And I think it's already changed, man. Huh? I think Let me, I need I need I gotta ask two things. He's Can you guys making less than a million a year? Yeah, that is fucking nuts. Hey, they, San Francisco. So hey yeah. man, 20 mil is cool. In San Francisco, he's not even hundred like, to live there. Drew's like, talking yeah. here, man. Let, let's give him a Oh, we forgot he was so, here. So, so one thing. Um, can you guys ask John why he doesn't want to hear me? And two oh, no, I'm sorry. I can hear you, but it hurts my ears when I have the headset on. I don't want to be disrespectful. Like, so you don't know me. what he's saying at all. Actually. No, I, I can <laughs> hear him in case he speaks loud enough and projects well enough. But it hurts my ears, so I had to take it off. I don't need to be offensive. I'm sorry. But I, right, okay. I do want to hear you, and I can. I, I just really want to right. let you know. Um, and the second thing I want to say is, Joel, you're you're saying that you know if he were just a notch better, that he'd make these plays. Now he answers a touchdown drive by the Chiefs with a touchdown drive of his own in the fourth quarter. 
He later in that quarter goes and although not a touchdown, does put his team in field goal range where they go and they kick the go ahead field goal. Putting up 10 points in the fourth quarter, I'm not looking at him as the reason why, hey, if he were just a little bit better. I understand your sentiment in terms of there's specific moments where that last play in overtime where if he were a little bit more athletic, he could have scrambled out, gotten away from Chris Jones, not rushed the throw. But at the same time, I mean, look at that Bills game where Chris Jones gets pressure on Josh Allen and it kind of rushes Josh Allen to make that throw, right? We, we, we gave credit to Chris Jones in that moment because Chris Jones is an elite defender. I'm not looking at Purdy in that moment and thinking, ah, oh, man, if he were just a little bit more athletic, if he were just a little bit better, uh, he would have made that play. I'm, I'm kind of – I find myself throughout the entirety of these playoffs consistently giving credit to the Chiefs defense, you have to go out there and execute. When you make and you step up the way that they did, we've talked about how McDuffie played at an MVP-esque level in, in the Super Bowl. Chris Jones, of course, be, having the impact that he did. I, I feel like I'm not, I'm not, my takeaway from this, especially in that fourth quarter in OT, is that, ah, oh, man, I, I just wish that Brock Purdy was just, was just a little bit better. To me, he did a job. And yeah, he fell short. And that's unfortunate, but at the same time, he left the field not once, but twice with the lead. Well, listen, I, I don't think Brock Purdy played a bad game. I thought, you know, he did enough to Just win the that. game. It's, a, it's as simple as that. And I think, especially in this matchup, if Brock Purdy would have lost to the Lions and the Packers, this is a different thing. Agreed. But every team has lost to the Chiefs. Lamar Jackson lost All to the, the guys. Chiefs. Threw, threw into triple coverage, by the way, yeah. and lost to them. Yeah. Uh, Josh Allen lost to them, missed that throw. To uh, in the end, damn, you didn't have to say he threw in triple coverage. God, Joe, damn. Joe Burrow lost to uh, uh, Tua. Tua looked he like sucks, a, a terrible quarterback, and you know, he Riff, what the hell's going on with you, flip flopping pancake? bitch? No, I damn. just I just remember Woo. you saying uh, Bills regress, uh, Dolphins win in division, and just yeah, Bills good. lost too. They're mid, they didn't regress. Just quick question I want to ask you guys if we're ranking uh, the quarterbacks to face the, the Chiefs in the playoffs, what is the ranking and what is the gap? Lamar three, yeah. Lamar at three, yeah. yeah. Like, oh my God! Oh, he played better than Lamar. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, sure. is that the question? So I thought it was just quarterback. Yeah, no, no, no. The question was the zone. He played well. You're uh, saying who had the best game against the Chiefs? Yes, defense? yes, that's yes. what you're saying. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, he's not better. No, it's yeah. Josh Allen one. It's Brock gap Purdy two. It's a gap. Brock Purdy two. I think Brock Purdy Lamar is. Not not far off. No, but Lamar also. A touchdown was taken off the board because of the fumble that right. that's true. Zay Flowers had. Good point. True. So that's why it's I not a, definitely want to give him that gap. credit. It's not a bigger not, gap yeah, than yeah. one and it's two. It's similar. And then there's like a big Mount gap Everest there. drop off, and then Tua like all the way at the bottom. Tough game for Tua. It was pretty bad. It was. It was. Pretty bad. I, 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 I'll say this, and I, and I, I've been hearing a lot about um, you know, you need a guy and stuff like that. And you do, I, and you do, you do. You do but you you don't to a degree. Unless you're Shanahan. Yeah, I think I think Shanahan. Like Shanahan is the perfect coach to where you don't need a guy per se. You just need a guy better than Jimmy G. Yeah. But I think at the, at the same time, you know, you're in a position where the league is run by Mahomes. And, you know, we even seen it with Tom Brady. You know, it's it's hard to beat the one guy at the top of the food chain. Even if you have a guy, you know, we've seen all the guys are in the AFC and they still struggle to beat Mahomes. So, I don't, I don't, yeah, well, yeah, he played him twice. You know, he won once. Congrats to him. Um but I, you know, he's he's always also been lucky about Lamar getting hurt in his division. But at the oh, same yeah. at the same time, you know, all these guys, you know, even they struggle to beat Mahomes. So I don't think it's an insane knock on Purdy. You know, everybody loses to Mahomes. I just think, you know, for him, the margin for error is shorter than the the, the guys in the league. You know, like Josh, like Lamar, because you know you expect these guys who have shown you they can be elite, they can be superheroes. Purdy's not not gonna show you on a week to week basis he could be a superhero. That's just not him. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the margin of error for him is obviously shorter than the other guys. I'll also say this in terms of extending and making plays. If I'm not mistaken, if it was, it was in overtime where he is escaping the pocket is hesitant on what he wants to do, whether scramble or throw and then throws to use check and use checks able to lay out and make a nice grab too. It's like, there were moments where Purdy showed his escapability and ability to, to create out of nothing too. So I, I don't know, man. I, I feel like I, I have to give more respect to, to Purdy than what the blind numbers say. He he played a, a safe game. He executed against a, a, a elite defense. And I 
unfortunately have to say that it wasn't enough because obviously they lost the game, but two instances where he gave the defense a chance to hold. Although it had been the opposite the entirety of the the game, they were up 10-0, three Super Bowls in a row where the Chiefs have been down 10. I mean, that's just crazy stuff right there. But he flipped it was when now his team was now at the deficit was able to go out there and, and put points on the board and put his team back into, into the lead. Purdy, Purdy played a solid game. No doubt. Listen, I think, uh, Super Bowl Purdy played well. I think bless you. Bless you. Even with that game bless though, there's still, there are still question marks around, around Brock Purdy and especially his future because you look at the 49ers payroll right now, their payroll in 2024 they're paying Trent 31 mil at 36 years old. He's going to turn 36 years old at the, at the start of the new year. Debo's making 28 mil. Eric Armstead, 28 mil. Fred Warner, 24 mil. George Kittle, 21 mil. McCaffrey, 14 mil. Ayuk, 14 mil. And he's a free agent in 2025. Mm -hmm. And in 2025, Armstead, Tarveris Ward, Greenlaw, Ayuk, Hufanga are all free oh, agents. Man. Brock Purdy is the lowest paid star quarterback in the NFL by a wide margin. In terms of just sheer value and what you're getting from his production, well, it is second contracts. to none in the NFL. Most valuable contract mm -hmm. for sure. And that gives the Niners the luxury to bring in Javon Hargrave in the offseason and bolster up their defensive line. But the question now with Purdy becomes, it, once we pay him when he's eligible for a contract, depending on what he is asking the contract we give him, Will we, be, will we be able to still have the amount of talent that we have around him? This defense took a step back from previous years. As they keep adding more talent on the offensive side of the football, the defense is going to continue to take a hit. And I'm not sure what the Niners are going to do in the future. As of right now, I think, you know, of course, best plan of action and course of action is to keep Purdy. But if Shanahan doesn't have the disposal of weapons on offense with the quarterback that – we understand is not in the top or echelon of quarterbacks. What does it look like? And I, I do feel like we're running into a scenario where the 49ers have had so much success up until now, but there could be a period of time where it feels like they're stalling out, especially if they're not hitting on the draft picks in the draft, because there's just, it's weird, man, because I feel like the 49ers have built, built a Super Bowl roster in the worst way possible. This has not been a model of consistency for any team in the NFL. You build on a rookie contract, you get positions of value, and you pay them. They are making their inside linebacker, Fred Warner, one of the highest paid players in the league, a tight end in George Kittle, a running back in CMC. That's not usually how you build out a roster. And they even traded up three first round picks to go get Trey Lance. And it wasn't their guy. And you can say they looked into Brock Purdy. He was the last pick in the draft. They passed on him multiple times. You built to roster in the worst way possible. And you'd lucked into the last pick in the draft. And he was, he was producing for you. But when will those bad decisions start mm -hmm. to catch up to the Niners? And I think we're, we're getting closer to that. And it's, it feels like it's relatively close. That I can't. Seen CMC in, in that I'm sorry, Joel. Uh, I can't include CNC in that in saying that this was the the wrong way to build things for the idea that you mentioned Fred Warner, you mentioned George Kittle, you mentioned CMC. I don't I maybe I heard it as a negative, and if that's not how you meant it, I apologize. It is objectively a bad way to build a roster. Christian McCaffrey paying a running back that much money. It is he's more than a running back. He's more than a running back. And George Kittle also is on top of being an uh, elite level receiving tight end. He's also an elite blocker are probably the best blocking tight end are arguably the best blocking tight end in the league. I understand what you're saying about the middle linebacker position as we've seen its value become a little bit less and less, but we've all collectively come together and said, this is the best at his position. So you have the best middle linebacker that you decided to pay that much money. You have the top three at worst tight end in the league in, in George Kittle, but for his value of blocking, especially when your team is as desperate as it is at, at the blocking position, you have him at, out there and then CMC, who's not just a running back, he's also a, a wide receiver. Was their team had the team high uh, of eighty receiving yards for them yesterday? I'm just looking at it where if those three players were regular, I'm with you. I understand what you're saying. More so, the fact that they fun they fumbled on Trey Lance. 
that's where I, I, I understand what you're saying. But the way that I've kind of made my mindset with it is they, they selected Brock Purdy with that number three overall pick just to make it a little bit cleaner for them. Obviously, that's yeah. not how a lot of Niners fans see it. And you're 100% right there. They didn't do that. They were fortunate to have Brock Purdy be as good as he is. But CMC is a one-on-one talent. To me, John, when you were saying about sustainability, like what's going to happen in the future years with Brock's contract, mm-hmm. to me, the bigger question is, how much longer of CMC do they have? Right. Is he going to be as dominant and as valuable as he was this season and the season before? To me, that's the bigger question, because if I'm not mistaken, next year, he'll be 29. The year after that, he will be 30 years old. That's the bigger question to me. But at the same time, he's so much more valuable than just the running back. And that was yeah. evident yesterday where he was used in the past game and was more dominant in that regard. Well, that goes hand in hand with the roster building. You know, Christian McCaffrey getting older. Now you have a quarterback that when you pay more money, you're expecting him to take a bigger leap and now be more so a quarterback that's carrying and not someone that is driving the car you want it to be the engine and with all the outstanding quarterbacks Lamar Mahomes Allen we see that they are that I think Purdy is the 15th best quarterback in the league I do think it is a bad way to build a roster getting a running back there is a reason why no team is trading for Derrick Henry for as great as Derrick Henry has been and Christian McCaffrey yes he does a multitude of things but watch in this free agent market Another player who does a multitude of things, maybe not at the same level, but still at a very high level, Saquon Barkley. I don't think the market for Saquon Barkley is going to be that lucrative in this free agent class because we understand that running backs are an easily replaceable position. And the luxury of getting CMC came hand in hand with having a stacked roster. But the 49ers have paid a bunch of positions that aren't at the top of the value in the NFL. And Christian McCaffrey, it worked in San Fran because it was a perfect situation for him. Had he went to other situations, it wouldn't look like this. And my criticism dating back to the the day the move was made was that I don't think CMC is the needle mover or the player, a running back is the player that gets you over the hump in these big Super Bowl games, especially with a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo being under center. If Jimmy Garoppolo is playing this year for the Niners, they wouldn't have had a chance. Brock Purdy is a much better quarterback than Jimmy, so they had a better chance. But it goes to show you that if you just don't have one of those top-end quarterbacks, it's hard to go toe-for-toe because you're training field goals for for touchdowns. Drew was was almost enough. Most teams, most situations, paying a running back, a linebacker and tight end would not be the premium of the right use of your assets. No. But these players are irreplaceable. CMC is the offensive player of the year. He is one of the premier skill position players in football. George Kittle is critical to their offense and their situation, their scheme, because of his blocking. And if you move on from these players, you're going to get a pretty big downgrade in a department where their offense is the strength. CMC is the best player in the team. I think in most situations, you are right. But in San Francisco's case, would you rather pay that money on CMC or spend three times that amount for Kirk Cousins when he's the 11th best quarterback opposed to Brock, who's the 14th. I think San Francisco is in the right for acquiring CMC, and they are in the right for paying these players like Fred Warner because of how valuable they are. Fred well, Warner, you have to pay critical. you have to pay players that are good at their position. Exactly, there's no, there's no doubt. Right, but That's you have to. This is the thing: the 49ers try to get the guy in Trey Lance when they traded up for him, and he the miss. he just wasn't good. He wasn't good. He's also but hurt. they try to get the guy. The reason they've been able to pay all these players is because they're not paying anything at their quarterback position. They aren't, they're giving Brock pretty less than a million dollars a year. That's the reason why. But we see across the league, you cannot pay multiple multiple positions. You have to pick and choose what you're paying. With the Chiefs, they had to make the decision of okay, we cannot pay Kelsey and Hill. We're moving on from Hill. And that allows them to build up their defense, which has been a top defense for the last two years. You have to pick and choose. The the Niners have had the luxury of building out this roster this way because, one, they drafted well, and, two, they're not paying much of the quarterback position. But once the question arises of how much you're paying Brock Purdy, and if that's a pretty high number, then we're going to start running into more roster issues like I think is happening with Miami right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's happening with them. That's why I think it was okay to make the move for CMC. At the time, they didn't have have Purdy at the time. It was Jimmy G, and they were paying him 
decent amount. But that's why I think it's okay to have CMC still because you aren't paying Purdy anything. And when you're paying a quarterback that that less of money, that few of money, you're able to spend in other positions like at inside linebacker, like at tight end, at running back like we're seeing with the Niners. But the one thing that I'm going to be most concerned about is McCaffrey's coming off a 400-touch season. You look yeah. at the history of running backs who get that type of touches, especially at his age, and he's an outlier. He's the best running back in football, as you mentioned, John. He just won Offensive Player of the Year. You can make the argument he's the best skill position player in the entire league. But you look at the history of yeah. guys who get that many touches. I think it's either 350 or 400. I don't remember the exact Three cutoff. Nine, 339. But it is like 80, 90%. You're falling off, and it's pretty hard. Typically, unfortunately, it's due to injury. And, of course, to the running back position, we've seen CMC have injuries in the past. Since he's gone to San Francisco, he's been probably the most healthy player in the in the NFL. He rarely misses games. But to get that many touches, cap it off with 30 in the Super Bowl, it's going to be tough next season to replicate that type of efficiency and, and, you know, God willing, have that type of health because it's just historically not been the case. You could even look at guys like Derrick Henry who had been outliers up yeah. to that point. They hit that touch mark. They fall off a cliff too. So it's going to be tough for the Niners. Thankfully for them, the NFC looks pretty weak right now. You know, the Eagles, I think we're going to be expecting to bounce back, have a, a, a well-functioning offense, hopefully, because last season it was pretty ugly. Dallas is going to be in that conversation. But for the next couple of seasons, it's going to be the Niners. It's going to be the Niners conference. You know, Caleb's going to go there. Drake May is going to go there to the NFC, that is. But you're asking a lot for them to turn around those franchises in a couple of seasons. So as long as you have Shanahan, you're not paying pretty much. I think they're able to, number one, make some mistakes, like trading three first for Trey Lance, and you could kind of bounce back yeah. off that. Even if they weren't able to get Brock Purdy, they could have got a guy, in my opinion, like Baker Mayfield, the way he played in in uh, in Tampa Bay this past season. And they probably, maybe they don't make the Super Bowl, but they would be in, in deep playoff runs. They would be in these games. That's just how great Kyle Shanahan is. So when you have such a great of a head coach, when the roster is this stacked, plus the NFC itself is pretty weak, you're able to, you know, have a couple hiccups, have a couple of mistakes, and still be able to bounce back. And from I guess it. the hope is that CMC is like gaining talents and durability, where he could have seven, eight years. I mean, that's an insane amount, insane workload, and he can still maintain that level for a couple more seasons. But when the 49ers got him to get up a second, a third, a fourth, and a fifth, you look at their history of taking guys on day two. Yeah, they already fuck around with those picks. That's great. Mm -hmm. The last couple of years, here are the Niners' day two picks: Jared Brown at Penn Jake State Moody. this year, and Jake Moody. <laughs> The year prior, Drake Jackson, who was hard a big part of this year, Tyron Davis Price, and Danny Gray. No one knows who Danny Gray is. He's been there yeah, on the wide receiver depth that. chart. And the years prior is Aaron Binks and Trey Sermon. So a lot of running almost backs. the majority <laughs> of their day two picks, they've wasted them many ways. I would much rather you pour them into a player in CMC who's arguably a top 10 player in football. They've also found a lot of gems. Talano Hufanga, Fred day Warner. Three. Yes, yeah. day, day three. three. You're right, you're right. <laughs> you know, Mitchell, I think and Lenore. The, the Niners have 11 picks, and I think mo more than half wow. of those are uh, compensatory. compensatory. Yeah, You saw wow. the report. The, there was like, there was a yeah, rival. They're mad at them. They're, they're mad at them. Because they're able to <laughs> have such great execs and coaches, and they go on somewhere else and they get these picks. It is pretty crazy that that uh, you get that many compensatory picks for that. Yeah. Fire. Honestly, if, if I'm a well, coach in the NFL, hired as head coaches and GMs and yeah. shit. I mean, hey. I mean, listen, if I'm a if I'm a coach in the NFL, I'm I'm making majority of my staff minorities. If that's the case, that's what I'm doing because they're getting a ton of compensatory picks. There. Yeah. That's, that's exactly that's what's happening. I don't know what I don't know when I don't know if that's part of the Rooney rule or it, it is. I think an extension of it. If a coach that uh that is a minority in your coaching staff, they get a promotion somewhere else. You get a compensatory. I was thinking if you them. hire them too, you might get a pick as well. That might be, I, I don't know if it's within the organization. If if it I'm is, it's pretty I'm overkill. Saying. Yeah, but like I think when we hired Salah, I feel like we got some it was it's not it wasn't crazy. Like because they got two compensatory picks from Mike McDaniel going to the Dolphins because Mike McDaniel's biracial. Yeah. Hmm. D'Amico yeah. Ryan's going to the Texans. Uh, Sounds Robert Powell going that's to the Jets. I'll be honest, yeah. that's just uh, a terrible just, look for the league. Manager. That's a that's terrible is. look for the league. Because at the same time, yeah. you want minority head coaches to be on an even level playing field. But for then sure. with this type of rule, it makes it so people now think you're only hiring like these handed. potential yeah. coaches because yeah. you get these picks. And the thing is, those coaches are fantastic, though. They like, are. Imagine Salah going back to San Francisco next year. Uh -huh. and, and D'Amico Ryan, these are fantastic coaches as well. They've got on their staff. That's why they shouldn't be just minimized to the, to the picks that they Absolutely. receive because they've been great in their own right. There, there's no doubt. Um, the 49ers are early favorites to win a Super Bowl next year. To win? Yes. Mm, that's interesting. Right. I think it's a little bit early for that. You, you mentioned there's not just happened last night. There's not too many. Uh, there's not a lot of competition in the NFC. 
I feel like we were singing the same tune with the Eagles last year, though. With the Eagles, after it was always they lost, them and the Niners. It, yeah. it was them, and I, I'm not saying the Niners are going to have an Eagles like collapse. But Eagles went I, ten and zero or ten and one to start the year this year. So. Yeah, but they did collapse though. They collapsed bad and then lost to the Terribly. Bucks. But I, I look at the NFC and the Lions have the cap space to make a big time yeah. move and to get a prime time corner, a prime time edge rusher to pair up with Aiden Hutchinson. Glad I just seen the three, vision. I, I saw an interesting stat with Aiden Hutchinson and actually, uh, when he's off the field, the pass rush improves by like plus nineteen. Uh, neither here or there. Probably like hmm. a, a bad stat. I don't know. I'm just cherry picking. Small, small, yeah, size, small sample size. Snaps. Yeah. But um, what I'm what I want to say is that I feel like the NFC is getting much better. I mentioned the Lions that gave the the gave the Niners run for their money. The Packers, them being so the young, Vikings. Jordan Love improving. The Vikings. I felt like if the Vikings were healthy this year, scary team. They would have been a contender, and yeah. they beat the 49ers early in the season. If Kirk Cousins comes back. With that offense and that defense, defense improving, Brian Flores is he a did, miracle worker on defense? He did. He was a miracle He's worker. A miracle he worker. was a miracle All worker. Right. There's no doubt. So, um, the Vikings are a team that can contend. I feel like the NFC is getting much tougher. It's getting stronger. It's a strong conference. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to just think that. Uh, I, just, I just don't want to say that the the 49ers is, is easy sledding. It's getting to get to this it's point getting again. better. It's getting I'll, deeper. I'll, it's getting deeper. It's getting better. Nuts. But I'm not ready to sit here and be like. With you know, with uh, Kirk Cousins back with Minnesota, watch out. You know what I mean? Like he respect, the I mean, respect yeah. the I get it. Don't get disrespectful I, on Captain Kirk now, Joel. Don't do that. Just, I, I don't know if I can say they're, they're about to go on a Super yeah, Bowl right, run now. You know, you know they're a really good team though. From they coaching, are. No, they are. Have to play weapons. It's just mean, levels, you know. Sure, but that's a didn't they go four and zero without Jettas? Okay, something like that. They won a playoff game. Yes. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. The bigger thing is you look at the NFC North. The Seahawks with Mike McDonald. The NFC North has you four know, playoff caliber teams. How about you relax? Did this I'm guy just, just say the levels. Seahawks? Oh just my levels. Levels. You're, just just saying, levels. you're just saying things now. No, the the Seahawks, Niners got, got the talent. roster. They got the coach. They got the playoff. Yo, second, year, second year Bryce Young. Who knows? Who knows? Oh. New coach. Arizona. Shit. The team Arizona. Next year, we're talking about the Lions. We're talking about the Packers. We're talking about the Rams. We're talking about the Vikings. And then the Eagles, Cowboys, one of those two, whichever one of those two. I would, I would have I like, the Eagles and, yeah. and Cowboys over the Vikings. Though. I would as well. I, on. I just feel like there's a lot of talented teams in the NFC. Run that, run that, run that, run Not the Lions, though. Run Lions are at the top of the, the list. The baby. teams uh-huh. in the NFC that are going to be really good next year. Uh-huh. You have the Lions, yeah. the Vikings, uh-huh. the Rams, yes. the Packers, and you just the, the Eagles, the Cowboys, oh, okay, right. one of those. You didn't say you didn't mention the Niners, did you? Well, I was like, okay, so the Niners are in comparison to the Niners, yeah. I'm we know that they're, they're the they're the top of the, the what, about about, what about what about the Bucks? Facts, Joel. Well, they, just they lost, lost Dave Canales. <laughs> they did lose Dave Canales. Yeah, Mike Evans is a free agent. We yeah, don't know. That's, that's why the Panthers are on the rise. The, um, True. A NFC, couple years away. Chicago, a couple years away. NFC North. That could Chicago's have gonna be playoff. sneaky. Four. four playoff yeah. caliber teams, I think. Yeah, that's yeah. the Bears. Yeah, yeah. listen, man. One and nine. I still think the Niners are clear cut the best team in the NFC though. Going into next year. The Lions, because they have the cap, could make a move for sure. But it depends on the free agents, too. The Niners don't have many free agents. Chase Young, Javon Kimball, let him walk for sure. Sean Gibson, Jawan Jones. Yo, like Chase, Young, Chase Young had a good game yesterday. Respect. He did. He did. Kevin Givens. Still might let him walk. Some of the guys like Randy Gregory. Let him come to Denver. Niners have about 40 million cap, right? Something like that? 40. 40 yep. 40? 40? Okay. They have 40 million cap or they're yeah. uh, over the I cap. think they have cap. Check that. I'm, I'm pretty sure. They, for, they I thought cap. it. They're paying I, a lot see. of players. They might be all in the back. They are uh, three million over, for over the over the for cap. 2024. Yes. 2024. Oh. 2024. Yep. So they have to create cap room. Yes. I yeah. think they could probably. They'll be able to figure out a way. Yeah. Um, Lions are cool. Uh, Green Bay's cool. Vikings cool. Um, Cowboys, let's stop, man. <laughs> let's just. Yeah. Let's say, hey, this is really the last year for McCarthy. <laughs> yeah, let's Mike stop. Zimmer's there now. Oh, yeah, Zimmer's tough. Dak's still there. McCarthy's still there. Yeah, McCarthy. Oh no, there. the Niners for this upcoming season have half a million. Yeah, they're probably going to restructure it right now. I mean, the, the obvious holes are corner. They need another edge rusher opposite of Nick Bosa. You help on the line, offensive, and their safeties. You know, their whole secondary probably needs an entire line. makeover. Now we talk about the Super Bowl. We talk about Kyle Shanahan. I feel like those were important topics to get out the way. Mahomes, after the the Chiefs win, said, "It's the start of one. We are not done." When asked a question about the Chiefs dynasty, uh, do you get the sense that this is a dynasty? 
dynasty. Because I think it was about this already. Dynasty. We just dynasty about this. But didn't we you, talk about this already, man? We didn't talk about it. <laughs> we didn't talk about it. Do you get the sense? Do you get the sense that this is just the beginning? Oh God! To start. Yeah. I think it's it is. I think it is. I look at the Chiefs, man, and really, I just have to give a round of applause to Brett Veach. Let's just talk about the five-year run, right? You're about to go glaze from top to bottom? The five, Brett Veach is a go. The, the other five-year run we're comparing it to that was one of the best in NFL history was the Patriots from 2014 to 2018. They won three Super Bowls. They did a whole lot of things. A whole lot of things. From 2019 to 2023, or 2018 to 2023, the Chiefs are three-time Super Bowl champs, four-time AFC champions, one Super Bowl loss, one AFC Championship loss. This is one of the best runs that we've seen in a, in a five-year run. And I, I feel like what needs to be celebrated more is how this roster is being built out season to season, the adaptability. In the past two seasons, they traded Tyreek Hill. He gave Mahomes one of the worst wide receiver rooms in football outside of Kelsey. Okay. Mahomes suffered an ankle sprain in the playoffs last year against the Jaguars and still was able to win a Super Bowl for, for the Chiefs. This year, the Chiefs wide receivers led the league in drops and their offensive tackles led the league in penalties. It, you don't have much margin for error, yet you come back down 10 points and you win another Super Bowl. And now this team now has three. And you look at this team's history before Mahomes got here, it's clear that he's the biggest reason why they've been able to to win as much as they've had. He became the first ever player to, to win a Super Bowl while having the largest cap hit in NFL history. Last year, he was the only guy in a while to win an MVP and win a Super Bowl in the same year. First player ever. Brett Veach's drafts. 2021, he drafted Nick Bolton, Creed Humphrey in the second round, Trey Smith in the sixth. Rebuilt the offensive line that year because they signed Joe Tooney in free agency. 2022, they draft Trent McDuffie. They trade up in front of the Bills to snag Trent McDuffie because the Bills were one. eyeing him too. They drafted George Karloftis in the first round as well. Brian Cook in the second, who was injured for this playoff run, but is a good safety. Leo Chanel in the third round, who had the highest PFF grade of any Chiefs defensive player in the Super Bowl. Joshua Williams in the fourth. Jalen Watson and Isaiah Pacheco in the seventh. In this draft, Rasheed Rice in the second, who was the best receiver in this run. And Chamari Connor is safety in the fourth round, who was making some really good plays for them in, in replacement of, of Brian Cook. 12 starters in the past three drafts they found. And then you look at their free agency in 2023, signing Drew Tranquil, Mike Edwards, both started in the Super Bowl, Jawan Taylor, Charles Amena, who was hurt and didn't play. Like this team is able to replace players that they want, once lost after. 2021, they replace Tyron Matthew with Justin Reed. The ability for Brett Veach to on the fly make adjustments to know what we need on the roster is why you can trust this Chiefs team to be a dynasty for years to come and to build off this. Drew mentioned it earlier to potentially three P because I don't think next year this receiver room is going to get worse. The defense has some huge question marks because Legarius Need and Chris Jones are free agents, and those are two of the better players at the position in the, in the NFL. But the way Brett Veach has drafted the free agents that he, he signed, it's hard to say that you don't trust them to continue to build a roster around Mahomes and continue to win at a very high level. Yeah, it's it's an organizational thing to be a dynasty, right? It's not just quarterback. It's not just coach or, or DC or one specific player. It, it's from the top down. If it wasn't for Brett Veach in this front office and the scouting department, being able to have the foresight to be like, we got to get ahead of Buffalo because we know we're going to be seeing Buffalo year after year. We know they want a corner. We want McDuffie. It could change really the, the yeah. whole landscape of the NFL. They get McDuffie instead of Kyrie Elam, who at the end of this postseason run was getting benched, who wasn't even on the field. And Trent McDuffie just turned in an all pro season and was one of the best players in the Super Bowl period. Patrick Mahomes included. He was probably the most impactful, if not second behind Chris Jones in that game. To say they're just starting a dynasty is scary to think about that it's been five seasons, or I guess six for Mahomes. You have three Super Bowls. You have four appearances. Every single run has been a minimum of an AFC championship game. 
and he's just getting better year after year. You know, the fact that it took him till year three to really understand what defenses are giving him to get to this point now where he is just so great with his legs on those third downs. The big, uh, the big rush he had um, in, was it overtime? Or was the, the last drive of the fourth quarter where he gets 15, 20 yards? Joel starts screaming. He thinks he's about to go for the 25-yard <laughs> touchdown. He ends up short on the 10 or 15-yard line. But year after year progressing, and you do see some, some guys getting older, right? You see Travis Kelsey throughout this regular season, who's a bit banged up. But you could tell that his best days are probably behind him. You had the rumors about Andy Reid retiring or not, but we know he's going to come back. But to have such a great front office, it, it gives me the confidence that they'll be able to replace these guys. I mean, they lost Tyron Matthew. They got Justin Reed back, and it's not like they really j- lost a hitch, right? They came back, and their defense is better than it's ever been. You know, they lost Tyree Kill, and although, good job, that was insane. Um, <laughs> although they were never able to really replace Tyree Kill, mm-hmm. They've been able to just do enough around the edges where it was Juju last season who had almost a thousand yards. And now this season you draft a she rice in the second round and down the stretch, he was one of the better receivers in all of football. I mean, he was going on stretches where he was having 80, 90, a hundred yards week after week after week. And he came up time and time again during this playoff run. So the ability to number one, get great players. Number two, at some point during a 15 year run with Patrick Mahomes, you're going to lose these great players, yeah. but the fact that you can consistently replace them and with rookie contracts and Chicken finding guys players. around the edges and free agency and being able to somewhat mask or, or replace that production, yeah. that's how you become a one or two times Super Bowl champ to get into the record books, to get up there with the Tom Brady's and the New England's and those, and those dynasties. What they've been doing is it, probably just to start. And Patrick Mahomes right now, he runs the NFL. He owns the NFL. So it's hard to see a time where they're going to be slowing down. To build off your all's points with Brett Veach, he replaces Frank Clark, who's super expensive, with George Karloftis. He replaces Jarvis Ward, who leads the free agency, with McDuffie. And he's done in every single position. Offensive line, so much more than just wide receiver. And, like, everyone was talking this year, they really miss Juju. It's like, can Rasheed Rice be as good as Juju? And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, he is better than Juju, and I'm a huge Juju guy right now, and he was way better this year. Um, so they've continued to find veterans on these cheap deals for a one-year prove-it, and then they just find somebody outside of Sky Moore and Kadaris Tony who have really thrived. Uh, on again, you're able to miss on those when you, ha- yeah, you, when yeah. you have Patrick Mahomes. You're able yeah. to miss on Sky Moore second I round. I think Tony it's the third number round Sky. Pick. You can't wear 24 as a wide I receiver. Agree. I agree. You can't. That's a DB-only number. Yeah. All what right, I guess I guess this start? comes on to me. Riv, Riv no, doesn't want to talk always, about it. He always okay. goes um, before me. Always, it's all right. Even even through Zoom, I should know that you're 100 percent right. Now I said it it's already. Not- I hate I hate that I'm being forced to repeat myself. Uh, yes, this is a dynasty. Three championships in five years. It says it all. You don't need that third in a row to solidify yourself as a dynasty. This is already a dynasty. If you win three in a row, you can solidify yourselves as the best dynasty that ever played football. Most definitely, that's a strong conversation to be had because, I, if I'm not mistaken, no team has done it in NFL history. So for it to be a 20-year gap where no team has gone back-to-back, for you to become the first team to ever win three championships in a row, which is definitely a possibility so long as this core group of players does stick together. I, I mean, how can we not, without that third in a row consecutive championship, already talk about a team with three and five years they're already a dynasty. That's it. It's already said and done. But Mahomes said it. That, that he doesn't want to call it a dynasty until it's over, which is fine. I understand that. You don't want to jinx a, a good thing, of course, if you're a Kansas City Chief or a Kansas City Chief fan. But this is this is most definitely a dynasty. There's no way about it. The teams that have gone back to back, they haven't even reached the Super Bowl the third year. So no one's the even gone. Year. To yep. Well, this is they, they fight in history at this point. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. you guys, you know. <laughs> You guys talked about it a lot, you know, scouting, coaching, and then having that guy. I think that's the three most important parts of a, you know, a dynasty. And of course, you know, being able to move off the the, the veteran guys, the guys who, you know, have been there for some time or the players who have the name, but they don't have the ability anymore. They're not as good, you know, yeah. So I think, you know, of course it starts with the coach, you know, having Andy Reid, having the front office, the scouting department, like like Dell's mentioned, from top to bottom in the uh, management office. You just have guys who kind of understand the vision, understand the game plan, and who are working effortlessly on the same page to create a roster. Then you get the guy, and you get Patrick Mahomes, 50 touchdowns in his first season, fully starting, magnificent greatness, you know, and from there to now, he's been the best quarterback in the league, you know, so you, you get the guy, 
And then you just, you know, you build that roster around him. You know, you get Trent McDuff. You have Snead have a breakout. You know, you have Chris Jones be one of the best defensive tackles in football. You know, you had Travis Kelsey. You had Tyreek. You were able to move off Tyreek and still be able to win without him just having your quarterback adapt and having your offense adapt to a different environment. You miss draft picks, but you still end up getting some good guys in the draft on the defensive and offensively, you haven't been the greatest in terms of the wide receiver room. But then you managed to get a guy like Rasheed Rice, who is – become a number one for your team who's been great all year you know so you you've been able to you know kind of have some luck in this but also be able to just walk into every offseason with a, a game plan and be able to hit it on most marks and I think you know this dynasty is 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 here you know I think this dynasty is going to be here for some time you know and dynasties stretch out you know you can have a dynasty where you know, like Brady, you know, you keep Brady and Belichick. That's somewhat of a dynasty, you know, those two guys together. And this is like Mahomes, Andy Reid, Kelsey until he retires. You know, they're going to be a constant in the AFC championship, a constant in the Super Bowl because they just they have a formula. They found the formula in their front office from their front office to the coach and to the, uh, the quarterback. They understand it. They follow it and they know how to execute it. And when you have that from top to bottom, it's just really hard to replicate or hard to beat. You know, you have teams like Buffalo who have the quarterback but may not have the coach every game, you know, may not have the defense, the, the personnel. You have the Bengals, who they're the one team that did beat them, but this year they didn't have the help. They weren't the lucky. You have Baltimore, who didn't have the coach at the right time in the AFC Championship game, game but point. do have the quarterback, you know. So for the, for the Chiefs, it's just like they always seem to have it clicking at the mm -hmm. right time together on the same page and a lot of these teams just don't have that you know you look at the nfc the eagles they didn't have a click it this year they don't have the coach in dallas they just fumble all the time i don't really know what to say about them and then the the um, niners they just unfortunately they didn't have the defense and the offense clicking at the same time right. but the chiefs seem to find a way to you know always have it clicking at the same time and that's mm -hmm. something you got to give credit to they have the experience no one else has and the fortune the niners really have not I feel like yeah it's, uh, it's the culture of them too yeah. like you go into you get drafted as a rookie whether you're on the offensive side of the ball defense side of the ball you go in the first person you see is Mahomes or Kelsey or Chris Jones or Andy Reid and the expectation every single year is Super Bowl the expectation is you're not going to be a bust like look at the lineage of draft picks they've had all of these guys they've been able to bring in these last few years you don't want to be that dude that is able to screw up this situation where if I go and play my ass off I could win multiple Super Bowls that's not the same where 90% of other franchises, when you look at their track record of draft history and it's just bust after bust after bust or, or it's guys that have issues off the field or it's it's players who get a contract and don't live up to that contract. When you have so much winning in one organization, you want to be a part of it and you don't want to be that outlier that isn't a part of it. So it's it's almost an added pressure on you, but it's a good pressure because it's going to make you work harder and want to be part of this team that's going to, you know, three straight Super Bowls potentially. I was watching Mahomes uh, post game interviews at the Super Bowl. Of course you were. And what struck me the most is just how down to earth he is about everything he's accomplished. Drew mentioned it, the comment about the dynasty. You mentioned it, uh, saying that Brady is going to be the GOAT because he beat him in a head-to-head. -head. But trying to turning every negative situation into a positive, a, a big thing that happened was the kind of a, the Kelsey shoving Andy Reid, and that turned into a big thing. Mahomes was asked about it. Kelsey was asked about it. They were together. And, and Kelsey kind of just said, you know, it was out of love. He didn't go too in-depth about it. And then Mahomes is coming out, out and he's saying, that's who we are. You know, we get very passionate. We love the game and that's how we make each other better. Like everything that can be negative, he turns into a positive situation. I think the way he's carried himself this entire season mm -hmm. with his receivers selling him, yeah. his offensive line selling him, and he has not put the blame on them once. Mm -hmm. so we see Aaron Rodgers. We, we see Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. The, the second he, got, he gets a chance to blame Matt LaFleur, he's doing it. The second he gets a chance to blame receivers, he's doing it. And, and Mahomes all year long, he hasn't done it. Now, the Chiefs won a Super Bowl, which means that next year they will be opening up the 2024 NFL season. And it's between these eight teams that they will face. Which one is the one you want to see the first game of the season? The Ravens, Bengals, Broncos, Texans, Raiders, Chargers, Saints, and Buccaneers. Texans. No Buffalo. You said Buffalo. No Buffalo. No Buffalo. Because these are the home games Casey's going to have next year. We're going to get a fully healthy Joe Burrow. If we open the season with Bengals versus Chiefs, we're getting a banger. I'm 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 going off the, not off the wall. I'm going a little different. I think Houston and Chiefs would be a great. That'd be that would be the Detroit Chiefs kind of same exactly. vibe. That we yeah, got yeah. We, you get the young young and upcoming young blood walking in. 
okay. you know, playing play my home. I like that. How can you reject the idea of Joe Burrow it's not hard. going to KC? I want Bengals KC. Bengals KC, not the Bengals KC would be an OD, Riv. They're like half those games, though, like Chargers with Harbo for the first time there. That would be fun. Off that seeing too. Burrow, seeing the Broncos there. with Drake May at quarterback. So That's not going to be viral. I'm not. Broncos might be last on that list. Yeah, might not even be. It shouldn't be on the list. I'll be honest. But when we get Drake May, you guys are going to be hopping on the bandwagon. I'm going to tell you guys now. He's got to stop. How about, how about the Chargers with Harbaugh's opening debut? Yeah, that's what I just said, John. He did oh, say that. Sorry, yeah, yeah, no problem. Saying, right. put the Use on. those years of yours, John. <laughs> no, but it would be it would be fun. It would yeah, definitely be fun. That's my so opinion. none of us want the AFC Championship game rematch I'm with good the Ravens nah, and with the With all due respect, no. I'm, I'm going to cry. Oh, Houston, we just saw that. Joel so doesn't want to see his team lose action. again. I think it has to be the Bengals. That's, that's yeah. a slam dunk pick. Yeah, I think I don't, I don't mind Bengals, Bengals. Don't get too cute with it. That's a slam Can dunk I ask pick. you guys a question? And this might be a little bit crazy. Uh, now, obviously, hindsight's so crystal clear 2020. But are we going to look? Obviously, we know that Mahomes would rather him on his team as opposed to not being on his team. But do we now look at Tyreek Hill not being on the Chiefs? as a, a benefit to Patrick Mahomes' game as a whole for the idea that it's made him a smarter. Drew's cutting off right now. Yeah. I know what he's saying though. He's he's right. Like I, I do know what he's saying. It's I think one makes him smarter, but number two, it helps his legacy. Like you lost arguably the best wide receiver in football and won back-to-back championships. Like Montana didn't do that with Jerry Rice. You know what I mean? Like that's something that Mahomes is going to have to himself and, any quarterback who comes after him, that's going to be like a pretty big deciding point between him and other guys. He's become a totally different quarterback. He comes to the NFL, throws 50 touchdowns and this explosive passing attack, and then now he has to play like Tom Brady in a completely yeah. you know different way. You know what's funny about Tom Brady? He lost with Randy Moss, and mm. then he won without like, Edelman. And, yeah. yeah. It's kind of Chris hilarious. Hogan and Danny yeah. Amendola. The, yeah. the way Mahomes Still is playing years. now, it was happening with Tyreek Hill. When they started playing those two high shell coverages yeah. against him, he started peppering those short intermediate areas even before then when he still had Tyreek. My answer to that is you're always going to become a better player if the circumstances around you become much more difficult to overcome. It's like a basketball player. If you tell them you're not able to drive to the basket with your right hand as a right-handed player, you have to drive with your left hand. You're going to get better using your left hand. Or flame out. Yeah. You know, the players that get exposed will get exposed. But Mahomes sure. was a player that he, he's one of the all-time greats, and that made him better. It was a more difficult circumstance. But but I still do think that if Tyreek Hill was with the Chiefs and Mahomes, Mahomes would still be this good. I, I, sure. I don't think there's a world that he wouldn't be this good. I think he'd still be this good. It they just makes win. it all that more impressive that he is doing it without Tyreek Hill. Yeah, I don't really have a counter for <laughs> that. Said, yeah. yeah, that was a great ending. Or you think let, me, so uh, uh, let me let me apologize, gentlemen. I'm trying to make a banger of a statement, and then my internet just goes and says, no, Drew. So thanks for, for picking up the conversation perfectly. But you guys hit it spot on, right on the, right on the head. I mean... Yes, with with Tyree Kill, we've seen the highs that he's been was able to achieve. But I think without him, it's allowed him to trust the field a lot more. And you're right, Joel. He was doing that with Tyree Kill. I think we saw that a little bit more once they started to play too high and he had to adjust his game accordingly then. But I feel like these last two seasons, we we've had to, the conversations where he's been more of a game manager this season than he has in any other season prior. And that was due to circumstance. But in the biggest moments when you needed him, especially last night, he was able to rise up to the occasion, whether it was with his legs or, of course, with his arm. Got to give him his respect there. And I think that with the idea that you lost one of the best, arguably the best in the game, for you to somehow get better, I mean, it, it really it really does speak to just – the work ethic and how great he is. Not even that. Like you, you, you lost arguably the best wide receiver in the game, right? You know, you, they they couldn't give him the money. Tyree went to another situation, and you're back to back Super Bowl winners, and the, the wide receiver is still trying to figure out how to get back to this place. You think Tyree regrets it? Well, he's never going to say it, but like no. deep no, down, like probably not, because I th I feel like players. Paid. Like yeah, players, paid. Paid. players in the NFL and NBA too. I feel like the guys who are like top of the top. Winning is important, 
But I think, you know, getting those statistics, you know, and be like as a wide receiver, like the statistics and the money, I think that's more important. And I think because he's one of the most dominant receivers in the game and he's also got his back, I think he's okay with the decision. You know, I, yeah. I think he would like to get a, another Super Bowl, but I think he's comfortable getting it in this environment. And plus, I don't think he hates living in Miami where it's tax free. So he's probably it's a nice place to yeah. like 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 all year round. A year. So I can see him still having. Plus, he's getting the ball every play. Fact. Yeah. yeah. He's on pace for 2K this yeah, year. Yeah. He's, he's good at some point. We play. got some super chats here. So Santos goes, let Joel Moran cook. Hashtag. Uh, the next one is Chris Bass. Kyle Shanahan is a fraud. Oof. I will never forgive him for Oof. Super Bowl 51, and he has done the same damn thing Falcons in all of the Super Bowls he's been in. Run the ball. Uh, you think he's a Falcons fan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. That's what, that's what it feels yeah. like. It's I don't know. It's hard for me to put a ton of blame on Shanahan. You, you ran some homes. Sucks. McCaffrey got 22 touches on the ground. What more did you want him to do, honestly? I guess be better in the touches. If don't you're fumble, if you're passing too fumble, much, yeah. you got to run the ball. If you're running the ball, you got to pass. You know, that's that's what it is. I mean, did he not run the, the only thing you got to three in the twenty? I guess not fumble would be the main. That'd thing. That'd be number yeah. one. Yeah. Rave, I think what you said was facts. Maybe a little bit more play action. Like if that's one thing I could point to. But other than that, I mean, I thought he called a pretty good game. Yeah, that too. USA goes well, well, well. Drew, how did it feel that your Broncos go quarterback John Elway? Handed the that was nuts. BC trophy to the Chiefs. I have no idea why he agreed to do that. I, I mean, I probably figure he was going to hand it to either the Niners uh, or the Chiefs regardless, but Respect seeing Brady. him hand that trophy over there was nuts. Comment? Did you see Elway's Twitter? Uh, he tweeted uh, somebody was like, somebody said something about Mahomes, and he was like, talk to me with Mahomes. Uh, catches Troy my Aikman. rings, yeah. That's Troy Aikman. Oh, this Aikman is not- fact. Ah, he said yeah, yeah. Uh, when he gets thirty three percent of my yeah, rings, yeah, talk to me. And then somebody added him again, like last night, like, yeah. "Oh, we're here." <laughs> Booty Liquor two thousand has a comment for John. Nuts. He says, "John here, WW. Also, Mahomes really is that's your the burner, goat. John. <laughs> Do I have a Booty burner? Liquor? <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> booty liquor's in this comment section, man. Yeah. Shout out booty liquor. Shout, Shout out booty, booty liquor. liquor. Truck in the you US of A sends another super chat. Goes, Steve Wilkes is definitely not coming back. Mm. Basic, what you see is what you get. Defense calling zero blitz against Mahomes and try to call another zero. And Shannon has to call a timeout. Any suggestions for 49ers defense Shout coordinators? Out truck in the USA. I thought Steve Wilkes. Did Wilkes Steve have Wilkes have a bad game? I was going to say. Steve Wilkes is pretty damn That's good. Niners fans are aggravated. They are. I mean, they're there's... trying to put their blame on someone. I get it. That's yeah. a tough L. Put it on the home. And that's the thing. There's really no one particular. Yeah. Um, if there's any replacement, it would probably be Robert Sala next year if things don't Bill work Bill Belichick. Out. I'd blame Demo. Demo. Those were the worst routes I've ever seen anybody yeah. running for a receiver. You can, you can blame what? The CMC fumble, the blocked extra point. That's really the only thing if I'm a Niners fan, I'd be like, how the fuck did that happen? That's... What do you mean Debo ran bad routes? One, he was hurt. Nah, you, gotta, you gotta watch this shit. It's just when he came off the line. Yeah, so now that one route when he's in the slot, yeah, like, it was like, boom, 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 and he's just going, no. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just fucking with you. He definitely, not... definitely locked him up. Yeah, he, he did. He's he he fucking amazing. It's tough, too. He wasn't fully healthy. He's probably shot with Yeah, he did have a hamstring injury. He came game, back and so. played through it. CRB goes, Joel, is Jason Tatum in tier one? Just curious because I can't remember the last time an NBA player made the playoffs every year and played a key role in each appearance. It's my burner. JJ Spit. Redick did with JJ Redick. You said, you said some no no Jill. Talk talk about it. You said uh, in, in the chat. No oh, Gilbert Arenas. He yeah. commented in our tier Shout one Gil, man. debate. Show, man. And he said, Luca's tier one. You don't always have to have the rings to be tier one. Yeah. Mm, uh, because the way he's scoring is at the same rate of, you know, Michael Jordan, LeBron, and the Kobe's of the world. Mm. This early into his career, I thought thought Gilbert Arenas was spitting. Yeah. I, he didn't say nothing bad. I thought he it was good. I thought it was spitting. Just he was Luca is the only one in tier one without a ring. <laughs> you know, Gil it's took his time right in that post on our Instagram. Why didn't he take the time to come on, pick a side? Come on, he got, he's he's trying get, he got his own show. You know, does. the show is popping too. He's a busy man. I get it. I don't think Jason Tatum is tier one. He's knocking on the door, but he's not tier one. Tier two. It depends. I mean. Tier and this why because I'm not saying that he doesn't belong in tier two, but I feel like tier one has kind of like two groupings. So tier one A and then tier one. Okay, B. I see what you're saying. And I think all right, Tatum, so then he's in one B. Yes, tier what saying. one one B and then tier two is the next group of guys like PG Donovan Mitchell. Donovan might be yeah. knocking on that tier one. All right, B, we're, man. we're putting so Jason Tatum's back in tier one. Tier one B. Mm-hmm. 
Actually, no, you're right. Here's in tier two. Uh, yeah, no. Because tier tier one A you were thinking is, about it too hard. Tier one A <laughs> is is Giannis, Jokic, Steph. Tier one B is like Luca, KD, LeBron, and Touché. LeBron. Yeah, and there's tier one guys. Yeah. Steph yeah, found a way to sneak back into one A. Wait, who? I said what I said. You're an idiot. Steph never <laughs> left tier one. A hey, never. But ever. who did you say? LeBron James is in one B. Kevin Durant, who's crazy. been probably better than Steph this season, is in one B. Joel okay, Embiid, who's been the best player in in the league up until the injury, is in one B. He has more help and four more wins. I be doing these on the fly, man. Is listen. All I know is that the tier one players in totality is Jokic, Giannis, Curry, Luca, Embiid when he's healthy, yes. LeBron, KD. And beating the in the regular yeah, season, he's he's that might be it. And he can't have I'm, I, I hope I think, I think I'm about Anthony wrong. Davis. Who's Anthony simplistic? Davis, but but to be a tier one superstar to me, you've got to be a top five player. Or you've thanks got for to thinking about that, Joel. I appreciate that. This dude said, no, yeah, "Why is Steph still in there?" But he brings That's up good. AD's name. <laughs> so who are your oh, tier one shit, players? Man. Do you have a tier A one? Uh, I don't do that. One shit. A one B. Maybe oh, one B. John's a man. Maybe one B. Ty Washington is cute, but. <laughs> I, it pisses me off how Rip, that, Rip bug, grabs, that bugs off the man. That man. <laughs> that 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 I watched it was crazy. It was it was always nuts. It was always nuts. It was always nuts. I'm a tie tie guy, and I felt like he hasn't been healthy enough to uh-huh. prove himself. He's also not being given a whole lot of opportunity. Where's he but now? That was a good signing. He's hey, John, put your headphones on. John, put your headphones on. Hey, John, remember when you made a diss track to me because Dame got traded there? Remember that? Remember when you made a diss track to Drew because Dame got traded to the Bucks? Oh, yeah, I did. And Drew, how is Malik Beasley playing this year? How's he shooting from three? Pretty well. Yeah, he's a and schmuck. I hate him. Drew, Drew, when. I do that, and I at you. The next tweet I get from Drew is gonna be some sort of hate the week. <laughs> I know it's one. He just called right back. But between that and the D move, it was really good off season. Uh, John, your but, tweet was good. I just always pick that one part out. But what, you, I don't like, you got saved. <laughs> you got saved by Damian Lillard. <laughs> I never said that. But I don't like a. Hey, you said you got saved straws. by Damian Lillard. <laughs> he did get. You did get saved. Right, but before I felt, that, I felt was Malik cool. Beasley was pretty damn good at the time. Best value sign in the summer. Can I don't hold? like how you grasp at straws, but the Jordan Goodwin and Ty Ty Washington, in this respect, <laughs> nuts. I still have stock in Jordan Goodwin. <laughs> Damn the, it! The Suns are not using him right. Yo, <laughs> Memphis, <laughs> Memphis really to the moon. Nice. Memphis to the moon. Memphis is great development, so he'll be. He'll be I think he's really good in a Bruce Brown type role, but he's playing too much off the ball. He's not a good catch and shoot threat. He's not but good. He really can be a, a positive rotation player, okay. like a good eighth Rip. man. Yeah. Rip, Rip, let me ask you a question. Eighth man. My tier one superstars. Jokic, Luka, Giannis, Curry, and uh, Joel Embiid all have a number five. It's crazy. Joel Embiid's never BJ Stead. I agree. <laughs> uh, he hasn't. You want to know why I have not beat in there? He fixed all... Have you beat Jimmy Butler? Of... No. No. Oh, okay. He hasn't beat a lot of dudes. But I Hope think Embiid had... It sucks. No I actually, I'm not a big... Oh, I forgot Kawhi. I'm sorry. He'd be six. Um, yeah, he's tier one, too. He's tier one. He'll be sure. tier one before Embiid. Embiid would be the last Yo, player. Jason Tatum <laughs> must have... Yo, did he Did he smash your guys' girls? What's happening, man? You think Jason Tatum is good at Kawhi right now? Kawhi's not Probably, shit. Uh, he's been... His efficiency is stupid. I, I, never not I never left, man. I never hey, left. Riv, I, see Riv, I think my... Riv, I think my internet kind of shitted out. Were you shit talking me for saying something about Curry being in tier one? Because he's tier one, but tier one A, tier one B. I feel like that's just kind of where you. There's a gray. There's a so you know little gray area there. No, I found it funny amazing. how you tried, you tried to take stuff out but put AD in. I thought it was that's hilarious. Cute. No, no, no. That's not what I was doing. You and if Part you said that, that screw you. That's tier two, superstar. He's not tier one B either. This tier one BA shit's this, this, killing this me. Letter, that's I why C Rim, that's what got me into sticky. Team. No, it's top five player or your top seven guy is. like Tatum. And Tatum has a championship. Y'all forget on the, in that, in that play. Right now. I was gonna say yeah, three years ago. Yeah. What? How is he not? LeBron right now just no. LeBron's a tier one guy. Tier one superstar. I just do top five guys. I don't think he's top five. But then your five is still a little off because you why would have Embiid. Why is there only five? Why can't there be more? I think I give exception to Embiid because he's had one of the greatest record three seasons we've ever seen. So I think you and could stretch it seven. Where he's had where Embiid There's has so had many great players. Also playoff series. Mm-hmm. He's starting to correct a lot of the things in the playmaking, conditioning, and mid-range shooting was improving. Oh, yeah. Well, he's All of those again, things so. gave me the, the belief, and I didn't mm-hmm. make a, uh, a video on this, but I was I planned to, that Embiid will have a good postseason. It just 
there is a undeniable hypothetical element because he literally can never stay healthy. He's, he's, but I still give him the credit because yeah. his regular season is one of the greatest we've seen. So he has like that Justin Herbert where he's a it's plus. Harden. You know, he's it's great. Hypothetical yeah, he's, he's a hypothetical, hypothetical goal. Goal. I think James Harden. No, he's a hypothetical my, my, question, my question for you, though, is that you had Giannis, Jokic, Luka, Embiid, and Curry in your top five. With Kawhi. Okay, so Kawhi, that would make it six. Well, I want to. I would That's have. Him, I would have him beat at seven. six. I would have him as like the. Okay. Last. So Katie's option. not in this. No, but he's been so good this year. I mean, he is like the top. So Katie LeBron just, is not in this. Katie just tell John. Just John. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just tell him the stretch. Katie's Thank you. We're right below. I mean, I look at the Suns' fourth quarter offense. It's, it's so, so bad. abysmal. So bad. So abysmal. Like, yeah, I think I, I think LeBron Katie. isn't Jokic or Giannis right now, but I don't think I definitely think he's a step above. Like Donovan Mitchell and Tatum's in the book is the well, I don't have Donovan Mitchell in tier one. Riv, I, I saw those eyes. They're Relax. Two. They're in tier two. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. There's different. Yeah. LeBron at the top of tier two. Mitchell somewhere hey, in the middle. The Cavs lost tonight. But if sense. LeBron okay, were a tier one superstar, the Lakers wouldn't be a 500. Actually, he's good. Team. Trucks in the USA goes, the Kirk Cousins curse continues. You lose to Kirk O'Bangs. You don't win the <laughs> Super Bowl. Vikings might trade up for a quarterback, either Bears or Patriots. Two, first, two, second, drafting Caleb. Or Daniels. All right. Sorry. Stop Thanks for the time. donation. Uh, yo, Joel, I'm telling you, you're going to be so upset the day that Drake May is a Denver Bronco because I'm never going to let you live it down. I, I'll be right. Trucking the USA, man. Shout out to the Super Chats. He's been killing Legend. it. These last Appreciate episodes. it. CRB goes, Warriors Dynasty will never be dethroned. Chiefs have ways to go. Agree hmm. or disagree? All right. Well, I said football. I was Before. talking football. Um, basketball, the best dynasty ever is the Chicago Bulls. It's not even close. The Boston Celtics. Okay. Oh, we don't what you're we saying don't back in the, yeah. yeah, we don't count that. I'm, 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 cool. I'm, I'm all cool with, with like counting. nine, six, okay. seven. Got yeah. it. I think the Chiefs nine, dynasty nine. is more impressive than the Warriors one. Because they got KD. They won 72 yes. games. They lost that they year. Lost, That's yeah. a part of the dynasty though. Sure, but you lose that year. If you would have won that year, it's stamped. I mean, I guess. I just think with are, the way that you have counting? done things. That, that 72 game season's like the Lakers in season tournament. 73. Right? They won 73. 73. Name, but name a season the Chiefs has had that's, that's like that. Oh, no. They, they didn't haven't go, like, had a historic other season. 15 1. Nothing. They went 15 1 in the playoffs. But the they just went on the uh, hardest Super Bowl run in, in history. The Warriors went 15 and 1, I believe. Or 15 2, something like that. They, had, they had to add a top five player to the team. Oh, okay. Well, wait, had, wait, Riv, you also, Riv, you also know it's harder to win a championship in football. They added him. You know what, Drew? It's harder to win a championship in football than it is in basketball. Consecutively. Yeah. Good Consecutively. Point. I just wow. think that, you know, you take away Tyreek Hill from the team and they win two. I mean, that is. How many two three peats do um impressive. an NBA is there? I don't think it's a lot. How many well, and three, how many three peats? The Bulls. And then the, and the Celtics and the Lakers. That's it. I don't know if the Celtics ever three. Uh, the Lakers ever three peated actually. Oh, I'm lying. The 2000, yeah, no 2000s. Yeah, I'm thinking of the Magic. No, yeah. they didn't three peat. No, no, the Ma Magic Williams. and Kareem. Yeah, Magic and Kareem didn't three peat. But yes, the Bull. Uh, the Lakers did three peat. Lakers, Celtics. The, and excuse me. Yeah. Yes, the Kobe and Kobe and Shaq three peated. Let me see. Something. The Pistons and Rockets won two each in a nine nine. Was it back to back in ninety four ninety five? BRB yes. also yes. commented. Also, Celtics Riff. won eight in a row. Bill Russell, yeah. shout out to them. That was like two shout rounds. Fifty nine to sixty six. John also, Riff, Jack, love, Casey Jones. Love the sweatshirt. Where did you get it? Somebody made it. I don't remember who. Um, I'm, I apologize that I don't remember who. I'm really sorry. Yeah, one gay fan sent it to us. Yeah, fan sent it to me. I think now, this was after uh, Steph and Barris Tatum. I yeah. got. I have a Tatum one. I have a Harden one. Yeah, we all got one. Hate that for you. Fuck I you got a LeBron one. one. He's never gonna win again. I guess I don't hate that for him. I don't hate that for you now because Harden's you know clip. Yes, I appreciate right that. Yeah. yeah. Used to so hate that for you. Kill Kill Moves goes. Drew Dell's <laughs> off season is here. I know it's early, but I need your help on dynasty rookies for there next year. I don't have my first round pick, so I gotta be smart. Right. Well, this is a, a great year to have picks. Fancy reaction. Uh, Drew and I coming back. We said after the Super Bowl. Uh, so once Drew gets healthy, maybe next week, next couple of weeks, expected for sure. Um, this is a good year though to have put at that picks. There's a ton of receivers, ton of quarterbacks, not a lot of running backs, a couple of interesting tight ends too. But there's definitely gonna be guys so what are you guys gonna be? Um, because you know, I know uh, fantasy season is kind of over, it takes a little. So, what are you guys gonna be talking about there? I'm um, curious, definitely drafts like prospects, okay. stuff like that. Um, probably doing some like recaps of you know, top 10 quarterbacks, receivers of this past season. Um, 
it's going to be pretty early look ahead to next year. So it's going to be a lot of free agency stuff too. That's going to impact fantasy a lot in the draft. It'll take up most of our time. I'm assuming. So, so. Santos sent a super chat. Santos. Drew is great at his job and river shows up, man. Brown. He's going to use credit, man. <laughs> Damn. Complete 180 by Brown over here. This guy, man, I'm done with it. That's not what Santos actually sent, but you know, no, that's what he said. I, I think, I think you deserve some respect, man. You've been yeah, showing up. Santos done, man. I don't really, I don't really bang with Santos. Like I, that, I don't, I don't know how much I can say thanks to trucks in the USA. Cause he sent another super chat Shout and this trucks. one is for $50. Damn. My goodness. Shout out trucks. My goodness. Trucks in the USA going crazy. <laughs> Top 10 players in the Super Bowl. Usher married his girlfriend in Vegas. They show, show Taylor Swift. 56 seconds total. Lastly, I was delivering North Bergen today at this food bazaar off JFK. Hectic as fuck. Do not like delivering in Jersey. Also, no problem supporting a great pod. Shout out to you. Shout out to Shout out to yeah. USA. Yeah. Truckers, man. I mean, we, we mentioned our top 10 players in the Super Bowl uh, last episode. But, uh, you know, number one, Mahomes. Number two, CMC. Number three, we went with uh, Trent Williams. Kelsey. Trent Williams or Kelsey. That's three and four. Five and six is Chris Jones and uh, Nick Bosa. Seven, eight, nine, ten is like McDuffie, Legere Sneed, Fred Warner. We had Ayuk and Debo. You could adjust it for the, the 10 best performances. McDuffie would be top three. But going yeah. into the Super Bowl, he wouldn't be where, in the top ten. So where does the Super Bowl rank for you guys? We did our top ten last year. We ranked the top ten. Blind rank. That was something. Uh, where would this one rank? This was this was an all-time Super Bowl. This was great. Went into overtime. You had big offensive plays, big defensive plays. Is it better than a 28-3 comeback? Ooh, no. I don't know. It wasn't. This is top four. I mean, I think was better Patriots than last year's. Rules. Yeah, I think so. More memorable to me. It was close. Last year's was so good too. It was very good. I don't last know if it was a heater. It no, was. I don't know if it's better. It's than better last than year. it's better than Rams Bengals. Yes. Um. Yeah. It's probably number five because yeah. you have the uh, twenty eight to three comeback, mm -hmm. the Patriots versus Seahawks, mm -hmm. Patriots versus Eagles, Patriots versus Eagles. That's yeah. three last year's. And then this one. Yeah, and it's between yeah. the Chiefs last year and the Chiefs this I'm year. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it's that. This one went to OT. This one went into OT and it was pretty crazy. Yeah, exactly. uh, my connection, my connection's pretty bad, and I don't know if we're done with super chats, but this might be my time to go. Riv, you are good Yo. at your job. I'm also good at my job. Number Yo, two, game's canceled tomorrow, buddy. It's canceled. Okay, that's that's Listen actually up. huge. That's huge. I get an extra week to to rest up. Uh, I mean, yeah, but I was, didn't really need to, but yeah. I heard you talking before the show. You said, "Ah, we're fucked if Drew's not there." Uh, well, I but I gotta do more. I'm really excited for it. Uh, I'll say this I'm one congrats, congrats to, to my sister Victoria. She's a Chiefs That's fan, she, she, she's one of the few people, maybe the only person that I'm happy for when it comes to Kansas City winning a Super Bowl, even though she sucks for being a Chiefs fan. Two, my mom, I'm sorry that the Niners lost, it was terrible. She was upset about it. And the last thing I'll say is it's unfortunate Ronnie Bell was not active because <laughs> eight. Eight different players caught a pass last night. And mm. I know, I know you saw Juwan, Juwan Jennings. If they would have won that game, I know for a fact Juwan Jennings would have been in strong contention for Super Bowl MVP. <laughs> and I think that it just would have been poetic for that to be the answer. But of course, we, we know how things ended up turning out. The Chiefs are the champions. But I just wanted to make sure I threw that in there that, hey, my analysis wasn't too far off that. They got they got guys that they can rely on. Chris we'll Conley a made a couple of plays. I gave you, I gave you Jawan Jennings. We said Jawan Jennings. You might Jewan. have been one for four. Ron, you Ron mentioned Bell. Ray Ray McLeod. <laughs> where you lost hey, Ray Ray McLeod had a catch yesterday. He he didn't he die? He, he uh, he 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 no, no, don't do that. Yeah. Ray Ray should he, he definitely didn't recover. He should have dove on that ball. Yeah, he's over there. Yeah. You're asking a lot. Ray Ray pointed to the to the spot where it was going to go. The, his guy didn't see that. It hit off his foot, and he tried to save face and couldn't do it. It was unfortunate. Be better. It was. But That's I'm out of here, guys. I, I need to go lay down. My head's I killing me. See you, Drew. Peace. All right. Be love y'all. Love you too, man. I'm not love saying you too, that man. back. Oh. You're not going to say it back on nah. that? He, nah, he knows how I feel about it, man. Shh. Damn, Rockets are smoking tonight. The, <laughs> the yeah. Rockets? Yeah, they're home, though. And the Knicks are yeah. obviously heard of shit. So, um, okay. John, we're gonna, back, man. We're going to finish this episode off this right here. Here we go. Uh, ranking the top three AFC teams that are the biggest threat to the Chiefs in 2024. Okay. So, we did some. We did something similar to the 49ers. So, should we get crazy? I'm getting crazy. We should. We we get should. Crazy? I'm going to get nuts. Okay. okay. We know the Chiefs are a dynasty. It's pretty clear. They've won three Super Bowls in the last five years. New Warriors? But what team in the AFC is the biggest threat to them moving forward? We're, we're going to go 1-1. One, one. I feel like that would be do, funner. 
That's fine. Oh, one, two, three. Uh, or just yeah, let's do it. Okay. So, uh, let's start off with number one. Man. Number, go, number go one ahead. to me is pretty easy. It's the only team that's proven to beat them. It's the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, Joe sorry. Burrow is going to be I back. We're getting crazy. I'm going to get crazy at number three. Yes. I'm not going to get crazy at number oh, one. Right. Number one to me, though, is the Bengals. I'm with you. They have 53 million in effective cap space, some important for agents. Uh, T. Higgins and DJ <laughs> Reader. <laughs> but with their coaching on defense, the quarterback, and the weapons, Joe Burrow's got a good sporting cast to beat Kansas City. Uh, <laughs> I'll I'll say yeah. Um, the Bengals. I'll I'll wait till I get crazy. I guess I, I thought you Dallas the Texans at one. Stop! Don't don't. <laughs> I, I thought Dallas meant we were gonna go insane, but yeah, no. The Bengals, the one team that has proven to beat them before. Uh, you still got Joe Burrow. They're gonna get healthy again. I'm I'm gonna go with the Bengals at one. Number one is Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, you guys all mentioned the reasons why, and I think Joe Burrow is gonna come back with some vengeance next year. I, I think he's gonna I think he's gonna be an MVP candidate next year for sure. And uh, number two, I'm gonna start getting crazy. What I have written down is not what I'm going to say. I'm going off the straight gut feeling, the vibes. I'm going to go number two wild card, the Indianapolis Colts. Mm. With Anthony Richardson coming back healthy. Now we can get fucking crazy. I think Anthony All Richardson right. is a superstar in the making. He just got to stay healthy. This is, and with Shane Steik in there, they, they got a shot. This ain't this you know the offseason. Yeah. We're talking about the fucking Colts and shit. Uh, my number two, let's get crazy. The New York Jets. Oh <laughs> why? why, why? Yeah. We're getting the Jets. <laughs> I mean, we almost beat them this year with Zach Wilson. That's we true. almost beat them this year. We got past the Eagles. One thing the Jets showed us this season, against top competition, they were able to show up. We got Aaron Rodgers back. This defense was shutting down top quarterback after top quarterback week in and week out. Them boys is healthy. They coming back with Rodgers. Brees Hall 100% off the ACL. Don't play with him, man. John, I, I John. got the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> oh, I knew you were going to go no, I'm joking. I've got the Houston Texans at number two. Ooh. They've got the quarterback to make the holy shit enough throws, but their defense is coming so far along with Will Anderson, Derek Stinley being healthy. Their coach in the special, Bobby Sloak, staying around. Yes. Yep. So you look Final at special. their offensive line, if they can get back a healthy Titus Howard next year, if they can target the offense. You're talking your mic? Oh, if they can actually hit the interior offensive line in the draft, CJ Stroud's oh, yeah. going to have the weapons, the defense, Hopefully the offensive line and the coaching. So I've got the Texas at number two. Yeah, yeah, no doubt my mind. The Texas at number two. I would have put them number one, but you're talking about they have a superstar in the making over there in Indianapolis. Well, uh, the Texans have a superstar. He's already here, CJ Stroud. You know, they have the coach in D'Amico Ryan. Just like how I was saying how the Chiefs have built the dynasty. They got the front office, the coach, and the quarterback. I think the Texans yeah. are reaching that type of well, – they got the coach, they got the quarterback. They have built a nice group of young players. You know, Will Anderson just won defensive uh, rookie of the year. You know, you got Tank Dell, you got Nico Collins, you got uh, Stingley. You got some young guys over there, and I think they have cap. They could build up this roster. So, for me, I got Houston at two. I got to give major respect to the teams I'm about to leave out. It's unfortunate, but once you pay a quarterback, it becomes harder to build the roster around them. The Ravens deserve recognition. The Bills with Josh Allen. Number three, this team has already paid their quarterback, but I think the, the coach they brought in is a culture changer. That's the Chargers with Jim Harbaugh. Mm. I think one of the Chiefs' biggest threats could be within that division itself. Jim Harbaugh has shown he can win at the NFL level, at the college level. Quickly. The Chargers got talent. They do. It just hasn't never been fully maximized, and I think with the great draft, with the pieces they have, they could be a threat. Mm. My third and final team, I got a little crazy with two. I'm, I'm bringing back with number three. I'm still giving it to the Buffalo Bills. They haven't been able to get over the hump and beat Kansas City, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of teams that go punch for punch like the Buffalo Bills. They almost beat them a couple, of a couple of seasons ago. They left 13 seconds too many for Patrick Mahomes. And this past season, it was a three-point game. If they Brandon Bass makes that – not Brandon Bass, Tyler Bass. Brandon Bass, oh, yeah. shout out, Celtic legend. Um, if Tyler Bass <laughs> is able to make that field goal, who knows what ends up happening. It's tough. The Bills are 30th in cap space, but – I kind of agree. I've got them at number three. It's really just a matter of fortune, but I do know that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kansas City, and that's just good enough to me to have them at number three. It's tough. Number three for me is the Cleveland Browns, man. Oh, <laughs> now I'm just fucking with uh, you. I imagine. No, I, I agree. I think number three is the Buffalo Bills. I think, you know, something changed when Joe Brady became the offensive coordinator, and I think keeping him is going to be huge for them. You know, I think Josh Allen and the way the team, this is the third or the fourth year in a row when they just went on a – a nightmare streak towards the end of the year to get back into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Miami still looks vulnerable. You don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to look like healthy. I think this division still runs through Buffalo. And, you know, I know the defense is getting old, but they found some gems in Terrell Bernard, you know, Razul Douglas off the trade. Teron Johnson is still there. So they do have something young, you know, Ed Oliver, Greg, 
Greg Russo, those two guys on the line. So they got some young talent, finding Khalil Shakir late this year. And then, of course, having Don Kikaid. It's just about continuing to build out this defense. And if they can stop getting the injury bug so late, I think this Buffalo Bills team is still going to be one of those teams that can cause havoc for the Chiefs. It sounds like CRB is disagreeing with the center Super Chat saying, to be honest, this coming offseason, the wide receiver free agents are perfect for them to get this offseason. Plus, the biggest threat is actually the Jaguars mm. to the uh, Chiefs in the AFC. Who's uh, he always saying about the Chiefs, the free agents they could pick up? Yes. I mean, you got T out there. You got Pittman, Mike Evans. A lot of those guys can get retained, but yeah. they'll be out what there. What do you think about the Jaguars, man? I don't really like them too much. So a lot of things went wrong for them this They're past They're not even season. the best team in the division. That's the scary part, yeah. is that this they year, might not be this the year felt like team. the year that they should dominate mm -hmm. the AFC South. This is the year they should really put a stamp on it. That's and you're right, better. Riv. The Texans they feel better. A, I feel the like Colts they took potentially two, three steps be back. I really do. Uh, you, got, you had the Texans, and then you had Colts, and the Colts weren't even healthy. They didn't have their quarterback. Yeah. And they have cap space. I, uh, and they got to pay Josh Allen this offseason. You know, that's going to take some money the out of them. really so many holes. I they don't do. think they're going to solve them, but the one team that we left out was the Ravens. I think that's for good reason because they're losing not just their DC, but their free agents are Justin Madubuke, Javanian Clowney, Geno Stone, both the running backs, Odell. I've got Baltimore below the Texans next year. I think it's for I all of those changes. Who, who would be your honorable mention? All, all, all jokes is out, but uh, honorable Ravens mention would be the Browns. Honorable, so. honorable mention would Browns. be the Texans yeah. for me. No, no cap, it would be the Browns. Ravens and Chargers. I think the Browns are more – I think the Browns offer up a better challenge to the Chiefs in the Ravens. Why? Well, Sean Watson. Because the defense. Their defense got exposed in the playoffs against a rookie quarterback. Yeah, 45 points. It's different, bro. They was they was out, they was on the road. <laughs> they, so, so they got to be different. home. They're going to be yeah. on. So you, they got to have a home. They got the best record in the AFC. Yeah, if that's the You got to count on Deshaun Watson. They can have the best record in the AFC. Well, that's the hardest thing. You got to count that's on Deshaun It's a tough Watson. division. It's a real tough division. Yeah. What they finish this year? They were six? 11 and six. 11 and six. How many? When's the Chiefs at? 11? 12? 11? Yeah. But the Raven, the Ravens were the one seed. They had thirteen. That's, that's 14. the issue. Yeah, that, yeah, well, but they had a good quarterback. They could they could have been pushing that well, fourteen. I don't know if they're going to have a, quarter, a good quarterback. That's really the problem here, you know, yeah. right here, the quarterback. I don't know you who just, it's going to be. Just bring in Jacoby Brissett, man. Bring him home. You bring in Jacoby Brissett. I can see two or three more wins, man. So to end off the show, just want to give a shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring this episode. You can use code PS for a one hundred percent deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Prize Picks is very easy to use. Just go to the App Store, download it, Buddy. sign up, and then based on player stats, go more or less, put in however you want, however, however much you want to put on whatever entry you're putting on, place the entry, and it's that easy. It's available in 30-plus states, although I am kind of upset it's not available in New York anymore. They took it away. What? They Damn, did they take did? it away. Why? They took away the uh, the pick stuff. Pick slip. and uh, The pick-em slips, yeah. And uh, I just New York. told my sister about it. She lives in New York. Wow. Yeah. Man. So it's not New York, but there's other free games that you can play in New York that uh they don't need that license specifically for it. So yeah, shout out to Prize Picks. You can use code PAS for a 100% deposit match up to $100. It helps out the show. And that's going to do it. We have for one more Super Chat. Super yes, we do. We do. And that's going to do it after this Super Chat. How would Fields fit in Pittsburgh? K2. Oh, here we go, go John. Oh, I'd be a happy man. I right love Tannehill. Oh, hell no. I saw that. Hell no. I would love to see Justin Fields in Pittsburgh because we have so much diverse weaponry. Him and Calvin Austin, George Pickens. And diversity and and the diversity at wide receiver. Yeah, I didn't know where he was going. With. You have they're all black. It's playmaking. Well, I mean, <laughs> <Pat Ryan. laughs> I'm, I'm not the talking one guy. about their skin color. I'm, about you their said, I'm sorry, my fault, my fault, my fault. Because of how much explosive playmaking. We that was have, the wrong word. Maybe? I have a lot of uh, what I mean by diversity is skill set diversity. Okay, okay. But but I think this is one thing Bear fans <laughs> write about. Justin Fields' first year in the NFL really was inhibitive to his development. I feel like this last year was the second year, if you will, because it was first year of Matt and Aggie and Allen Robinson when he was cooked. So if we're getting Justin Fields and he can take a step forward and his ball placement and his timing, I think Pittsburgh would be perfect. And with Arthur Smith, he's going to develop a good enough run What would game. you give up for him? I will give up a third. second round pick, but I prefer to go up a third, early okay. third. Deshaun for early Fields. Third and, fourth. and we start the rebuilding. Clean. For we'll see where Justin Fields goes. His draft season is going to be interesting. You love it. You guys can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Pick Aside Podcast, on Twitter at Pick Aside Pod. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like this stream, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time.